So let's start with the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, just for the members of the public, that this is being broadcast by NORCAM. I noticed Phil, Phil is on with us. Mr. Gilberto, if you're gonna, oh, you're unmuted now, okay. Um, now I think before we get to our business, I did wanna just open the meeting with a bit of a discussion, a brief comment at least, given the state of our country and given the state of the traumatic events that we've witnessed not only the murder of someone in custody under someone's knee, but also um, the violence that we've been seeing unfolding before our, our eyes. That's resulted in some additional acts of brutality um, that only some of these individuals are causing, including there was a murder of a um, Secret Service, uh, contracted Secret Service officer. There were six other individuals caught in the violent protesting that's going on, essentially Federal Protective Services officer and six other individuals. So I think it's important for us as a board to discuss that. We usually take board member reports at the beginning and I think it's important for us to, to bring this out and bring this up. I think the violence is detracting really from the message of change that the protesters are trying to impart on us. It takes a, really takes away from the civil rights movement to change systemic racism that we as Americans should all stand with in solidarity. And I, I know this isn't a partisan issue. It's my daughter summed it up for me this morning. She said, this isn't a Republican issue. It's not a Democrat issue. She said, it's about all of us against racism, period. And that's what this is all about. So, um, you know, because of these traumatic events, I think if you didn't, if it didn't evoke an emotional response, you're probably not human. Any, any of the events that we've seen. We have members who have family members in, in law enforcement, and I looked at those pictures. I couldn't help but watch those pictures late into the evening, wondering if one of the young kids I was watching in his, in his or her protective gear was the son or the daughter of my colleague, you know, in the line of defense, defending protesters and defending the people that are trying to carry that civil rights message forward for us. So I'm gonna let my board members comment on things, but I do wanna just, I have a thought, a meditation. I, I have a, it's called a universal prayer, but it's non-denominational that I would just like to read, and then I'd like my, my fellow members to give their thoughts on things that are transpiring. Um, it's a prayer that goes like this, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth, from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hatred to love, from war to peace, let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Let justice ever roll. Let mercy fill the earth. And I think if there is a message that we need to carry forward from all this, it's a peaceful message of moving forward as human beings and Americans who want democracy to stop the systemic racism, stop carrying forward the violence, listen to all of our leaders that are out there. If you haven't caught, uh, if you haven't watched Atlanta Mayor um, Keisha Lance Bottoms yet, oh, oh, go Google it. She's addressed the civil unrest in Atlanta. Her speech is incredibly impassioned on this issue. So I just think if we can collectively come together and talk about this, I think maybe that will help assist in going through this trauma that we're all watching and making sure that it's every act of thought, every act of word, every act of deed, every act of interaction that we eradicate racism and starting with the things that we do and say and carrying forward with everything that we indeed that we do. So that's my thought, my hope, my prayer, my meditation, and I'll turn it over you, to you, Mr. O'Leary, if you want, if you'd like to talk about board member reports or talk about your thoughts on this. 
Uh, first thing I'd like to say is uh, amen to everything you just said. Uh -huh. Thank you for that. And uh, so, yes, my, my son is on the front line. He was there last night. Um, and we were communicating up until um, 3.30 this morning So uh, with him. And he's um, forced into double shifts, mandatory. Um, and interestingly enough, yesterday morning, we had a good conversation with him about what occurred. And, you know, he was just found it abhorrent. He said, you know, it was criminal. What happened to Mr. Floyd was criminal. And uh, what I found interesting, too, was uh, the, the comments by the police chief in uh, Minneapolis. If you haven't seen that yet, you should Google, Google that when he was asked uh, by a CNN reporter uh, to answer the questions put to him by the Floyd family. It was amazing, you know. Yeah, uh, as he said, you know, the, uh, you know, all four officers were culpable, and he said, you know, the, the silence is culpability, and that that echoed in my mind that um, we can't be silent. And again, I was heartened by what I saw, you know, from from about 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, yesterday, what was happening in the city of Boston. It was actually peaceful. It was a, a, a terrific display. Um, it was, uh, there, were, there were no public speakers, but the people that were being interviewed uh, through the process were thoughtful, um, considerate, uh, on target, and uh, looking to address the, the, the situation uh, locally and, and, and nationally. Uh, and then what happened afterwards, my wife and I was sat, sat and watched it live on TV for over two hours from 11 to 1 was just unbelievable what we saw unfolding before our eyes. And then knowing that our son is right there on Boylston Street, um, you know, is, is somewhat disconcerting. Um, but, you know, it, it does start. And, I, and I'm glad you're giving us time to do this, Madam Chair, because you know, it, it should start here locally with the leadership here and go up. And I, I think Governor Baker did a terrific job on, on summing things up after a conversation uh, with the president today, uh, being totally upset that, uh, you know, governors are being pa painted and mayors are being painted as being weak. And they're not being weak. They're listening. They're tolerant. They're trying to uh, make these people understand that they are being heard. And they're trying to address the situation at the same time. And, and again, it's, it's the few that are causing the problem and the violence and the looting. And it's not, uh, it's not the vast majority of those people that were, uh, that were protesting yesterday peacefully. And so, you know, the message, uh, it, this is not going to go away. It's not going to go away, and it's not going to go away quickly. Uh, there's another uh, uh, march in Boston that's uh, scheduled for tomorrow night. You know, so you know, hopefully um, cooler heads prevail. I think the police department showed great restraint. Uh, Again, they had the assistance of other communities. They had the assistance of the National Guard. And it shouldn't have to happen, but it has. So, you know, for, for our family, sure, it's, it's a little closer to home maybe to, the, to others. And for Mrs. Gonzalez, I don't know if her daughter was called in or not, uh, but the state police had a significant presence there, and, and I'm sure she would, because it's all hands on deck right now for, for the first responders and the police departments here. So it's um, scary, it's frightening, it's unfortunate. Uh, but it's a situation that's long overdue for being addressed and be addressed appropriately. And um, hopefully there's a, a good result to come out of all of this. But, uh, you know, what, what happened to Mr. Floyd was criminal. He was murdered. And uh, we shouldn't deny it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner? Um, I'll just be brief. It's been amazing that this issue has resonated so universally across the country. You know, when you think about all the different um, cities and neighborhoods that have gotten behind this, it's pretty amazing. And it kind of reminds me of that old saying, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Really good to uh, healthy voices to speak up for the right thing. And so, um, you know, it was vastly disappointing last night to see that Boston you know, went south like all the other cities did. I, th I was hoping that we'd be beyond that, but you know, it only takes a few yahoos to ruin it for everybody else. But hopefully that gets overwhelmed and they can weed that out. And so tonight it's a peaceful demonstration the way it should be. Um, but it does kind of remind me, and this is, you know, we're in, in government and 
trying to guide people. It reminds me, I heard Seth Moulton speak about four or five years ago, and he said the reality in America is your zip code defines your future. And uh, that is the systemic um, racism uh, that we have in our country is that you, you define your future defined by your by the zip code of which you're born. And when you when you start talking that way, you're talking no hope. And when you're talking no hope, people are going to act out because there is no hope and no one's listening. And so, you know, there's a very, you know, somebody just said, this is not going away. It's truly not going to go away. So we very infrastructure of education, equality, opportunity, and not Thank you for the opportunity to speak about that. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto, could you please mute any attendees so we can just hear from the um, our colleagues? Mr. Schultz. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I want to There we go. Yeah, uh, thank you. First of all, I want, Madam Chair, I want to thank you. And you and I had discussed this issue at length this morning personally. And it's just abhorrent. I mean, you, you watch this video of what happened to Mr. Floyd. And normally I'm always a, well, let's wait till the facts come out kind of person. But you look at this video and there are no facts to justify what happened there. It just, it was completely abhorrent. Uh, anybody who, that's a human being looks at that, any kind of heart and compassion says, this just can't happen in America. Um, and I think to echo a little bit what Mr. O'Leary said, I don't think we can conflate the protesters with the rioters. They're two different groups of people. The protesters are protesting, and they should protest. This is horrible what's going on right now. The rioters are rioters. They need to be dealt with separately. They are not the protesters. And I, I think when people try to conflate the two, I think it loses the message of what's the issue of what caused George Floyd to not be with us anymore. I don't think the country is systemically racist. We've elected an African-American president to two terms. I think there are elements of the country that are racist, and that's what needs to be rooted out. I think the vast majority of people are very good. I like to look at the good of America. I look at the SpaceX blast off this week. I thought it was an incredible feat of science. And we have a lot of kids in our high school very involved in science that were so interested in that. And there's so many good things out there. But then you see what happened to George Floyd, and it takes away, you know, all the good that we do. And it needs to be fixed. I don't care if you're white, brown, red, purple, or green. You want to live in a secure community, and, and it's important that people be able to get out there and protest and not have it to devolve to what it's into. I, you know, I, I talked to friends in law enforcement that were, were stuck there last night. Um, earlier, Ms. Gonzalez, family members that were, were involved in this, and you know, we pray for their safety. I know store owners in Boston right now that are basically boarding up their stores and, and getting ready for what they think could be the worst, and it's just, it's horrible, but it, it goes back to you know, it's not an and or a but. What happened to George Floyd is just wrong. It cannot, that can't happen in America. It's a criminal act to be dealt with sharply. It just, the whole thing saddens me because, you know, I see people, this country gets very tribal, gets very partisan, and takes sides. And I think there's only one side to this issue. It's is the right side. And I just hope people stick on that. And I hope we become a better country, you know, after this, because right now things are not good out there. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez. <clears throat> so yes, I have a daughter um, in the state police and um, she was there. She was on the front lines um, and she came home, slept a couple hours and had her riot gear on and went back out the door. And to say that I'm not nauseous and sick and terrified, <laughs> It would be an understatement. Um, I have some different feelings. Um, I, I'm, I was not impressed with our leadership in this state or the city. Um, I don't believe during a pandemic when we have everything, every event of the summer canceled, that thousands of people were allowed to come shoulder to shoulder for hours together. I thought we were in a pandemic. I don't know, did they take the day off the virus? I'm not sure, but um, the fact that that was encouraged, I thought was wrong. Um, but to see that it was peaceful, of course, and nobody, I don't know anybody, I haven't heard from anybody that 
doesn't think what happened to George Floyd was criminal. And nobody was defending him. So I, I just didn't see where we needed to open up the city to these thousands of people and spread the virus around again. So I was, I was disappointed in that. Um, and I was also disappointed in the fact that uh, our mayor and our governor told our law enforcement not to wear their protective headgear because it would be intimidating to the um, protesters, which put them at a very bad disadvantage. And to watch my daughter at the state house with these thousands of people who could have gone over that gate and she had no protection, um, I thought was horrible and it was disturbing and it was upsetting. So let's hope that we protect our law enforcement a little better than that. And going forward, uh, not worry about uh, intimidating people. Obviously, they were going to riot anyway. The, not the peaceful ones. I mean, that was a beautiful day and, and it worked out fine. Not that I thought it should happen. Um, but obviously, if you looked at all the other cities and what was happening, you kind of knew this was going to happen. Well, as that sun was going down, I was saying it's about to happen, and it did. So um, let's hope that we can maybe learn from this, maybe go forward from this, um, that something good can come of this, and, and that we think about our law enforcement and, and, and pray for them and hope that they're protected, because I don't think this is over. Okay. Thank you to uh, the members for your comment. Um, just think it's an important thing for us to all keep keep the dialogue moving, to keep us progressing, and to keep the message of civil rights moving forward. That it needs to be, it needs to be heard, and it needs some things need to be done about it. Uh, change needs to happen in a peaceful way, in a peaceful, positive way. Okay. Um, we're going to move along to, we have a lot of um, other items to address for the town's business this evening. And our first, our first order of business actually, in, 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 in case anyone didn't have any, did, did the members have any reports you wanted to provide before we go to public comment? We're good? All good. Okay, the next order of business is public comment. M Mr. Gilberto, I do not see any hands up. Which, excuse me, Mrs. Hurlbut. We have public comment by Mrs. Hurlbut. Yeah, I, um, I think that what you just said, Kate, was great. Um, and I agree with it. I think we have to be very careful to, to realize that this is not a one-time thing that this has been going on for a long time, and that it's not just um, our criminal justice system or uh, some bad apples and police forces. It's having a, a teenage, it's being black and having a teenage son or daughter um, and feeling terrified when they walk to the corner store. And they don't have to be murdered. Uh, they just have to live in, in a, uh, a, a, a country that uh, doesn't make it easy to be different. And I, I just think we need to remember that, that this goes way beyond what just happened in Minnesota. Thank you, Mrs. Hurlbut. Seeing no other comment, Madam Chair? Mr. Schultz. Real quick, I just want to point out that even though people look at this as a Boston event, we have we had two officers, I believe, from North Reading as part of MLAC, uh, NEMLAC that were down there last night. So the North Reading PD is affected by this as well, and I think the public needs to know that. Okay. Um, so our next, seeing no other hands raised, our next order of business is the minutes of the May 18th regular and executive session meetings. Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. 
Oh, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, I just uh, would apologize to the board, but I do not believe that the minutes actually made it into your meeting packet. I didn't so see them, but I thought it was just me. <laughs> No, but it's not. It's not you. And um, I, I want to credit. Say she credit Jay does a great that. job. So you know. All right. <laughs> they, they blend into the background. No, J Jane finished the minutes, and uh, unfortunately, in finalizing the packet on Friday evening, um, they didn't make it into the packet. So we okay. will get them to you for the next meeting packet. Let's Mike, pass I over. Let's pass over that. Guys, minute. I see them on page twenty-two of the packet. Not. Oh, I didn't get them. They're on page twenty-two of the meeting packet. I see the. May 4th minutes? Is that what we're referring to? Um, no, it'll be the May 18th minutes. Okay. I'm June, looking at May 4th. No, no, just May 18th, yeah. Okay, so we'll get that squared away at the at our next meeting. And we're going to move on to the next order of business, which is the COVID-19 update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as the community has seen, we have been continuing to issue our updates on a weekly basis. We did have a number of the amenities at the uh, area parks here in town reopen with some um, guidelines in accordance with the state's guidance issued over the past couple of weeks. Um, that includes many of the amenities at Ipswich River Park. Um, and so they're, uh, you know, we're asking folks to, to respect those, um, those guidelines. Um, there'll be some changes in uh, and some uh, additional um, restrictions being lifted come June 8th, um, although, you know, we're still working to better understand what that guidance will look like and we'll certainly keep the community um, apprised uh, as to the impacts here in town. In terms of our public facilities, you know, I will highlight that you know, we're continuing to work within the guidelines for a return to, um, a, you know, a more um, a larger presence here in the town hall. Um, return of staff to the library and to the senior center as well, although senior center staff have been there on and off throughout. And we expect to have more information for a more formal update later this week, including the potential for a um, uh, uh, pick up and drop off of books at the library beginning next week. Um, so uh, we ask the public to stay tuned as we work towards that, as well as the return of uh, in-person um, counseling opportunities at the senior center. Um, so more to come, but we are working on that in the background. Also, um, and this is in my report, which I'll be reviewing at the end of the meeting, but the town planner has put a substantial amount of time into a, um, a micro uh, enterprise grant program in, in, in conjunction with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. We did a survey kind of very quickly last week when we became aware of this program and we got 15 responses indicating that they were interested in a potential um, participating participation in that program as well as um, that they were eligible under the income guidelines and so we um, we used that as an indicator and, th and then made a, a larger request in order to try to get a better understanding and have more resources it provides up to ten thousand dollars in financial assistance to micro enterprises which are businesses with five or fewer employees here in north reading um, as well as meeting the income requirements, which we put out there. So I wanna thank everybody who responded in short order. So we are continuing to work uh, on that avenue. Um, we are also working on um, to, to make available the potential expansion for outdoor seating for businesses here in town, which we know are very interested. We are reviewing the guidelines that came out from the state on Friday. There is some legislative action that we're hoping will take place with regard to alcoholic beverage licensing um, as soon as this week. Um, and um, we have been you know, looking at that and uh, also preparing locally here for the past couple of weeks to try to accommodate uh, where we safely can. Um, so I think that that's the extent of the COVID-19 update and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that I can. Okay, questions of the members. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just in relation to the uh, potential opening of restaurants and the alcoholic uh, licensing, um, is it your intention, Michael, to, to ask the board to meet in a special session once you, you sort through the issues as to what action may be required by the board? I know the pending legislation um, may allow for bypassing the ABCC and leaving it up to the local board. Uh, I just don't want you know uh, local establishments to lose two weeks worth of uh, potential uh, business 
because of our, our schedule. And again, if the majority of the board is willing to at least meet in a special meeting uh, to address the situation on a timely basis, I think that would be helpful for uh, the local economy, the local businesses who, again, I hope, they, I hope they survive. So whatever we can do to support them, we should. So I, I don't know how far along you are yet, and I know there is special there's legislation pending, but who knows when they act on it. Right. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, the board's next meeting in accordance with the town meeting preparation schedule would be June 15th. That happens to be a full week, I believe, after the, um, the, uh, the regulations would allow restaurants to open for on-site um, business. So, you know, we're working vigorously to try to take care of um, to take care of things, um, you know, and, and have a, a proposal there. So, you know, I, I hope that if, you know, that if we have the guidance from the state level that we're able to ask the board to consider acting sooner and if the schedule permits to certainly do so. I think it's important to have that be a streamlined process where before it comes before us, it should have received our DPW approval, our um, ADA compliance officer approval, our, our um, Board of Health approval, and that way, once all those, you know, checks are done and permissions are done and review is done, then it would just be a quick and expedited process for us. The way I read the legislation, it would just be something where it would be up to us, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't require, a, you know, posted public, you know, full hearing, but we would address it as a board. Um, address those kind of reviews and approvals as a board and it would be it would be good to have a process already in place where that's just streamlined so by the time it comes to us it's just basically a seal of approval or a denial uh, depending on the circumstance you know um, mr. mr. Schultz I want to echo what mr. O'Leary just said I think we need to do everything we can with our restaurants to not have them lose a day even so if it does mean us having a special meeting, we need to do it. Or we can do it, as Madam Chair just said, without having it. But these people have lost so much, we need to get them back up and running as absolutely as fast as we can. Well, I think we would need to meet as a board, but I mean, we wouldn't need to bring every licensee in and all of that. That's the way I read the legislation, although we are waiting. It hasn't been fully approved yet, and we are waiting on ABCC guidelines as a result. But whatever we can do now, um, would be helpful to get that process in place so that it's ready when the the guidelines come out and the let even after the legislation passes so it's not not a formal expansion uh, which currently requires a, a completed application publication posting to abutters a public hearing our approval then goes to ABCC for approval. The legislation would bypass a lot of that formal process. So we should have a process in place ready to go for when that happens. That's, I think, what we want. And we want to have all the stakeholders input before it comes to us so we can just say, yes, it's good, let's go. You know, so wait a minute, I'm sorry. Mr. Walner, was that? You waving? Was that you, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah. Mrs. Gonzalez, I'm sorry. I, I think if thousands of people can stand shoulder to shoulder for hours upon end, this should be tomorrow. They should be able to sit at a restaurant and have a dinner. It's just me. Mr. O'Leary, did you have a hand raised? Uh, no, I, other than I concur, I think we should have a mechanism in place so that we can streamline the process and uh, before this whole thing comes together legislatively I think we should have a process in place so that we can react as quickly as possible and I understand what you're uh, sort of understand what you're saying Mrs. Gonzalez but the state guidelines in terms of reopening isn't going to be full to maximum indoor capacity which is the premise behind the legislation to allow it allow um, business owners with restaurants expand outdoor service because they're not going to be allowed to have shoulder to shoulder hours upon hours of uh, full capacity. So I think it's, um, there's much more, there's much more specific guidelines and social distancing requirements that the restaurants are going to have to comply with. Right. So, yeah. so um, that, that, 
that will I think will be another thing that would be a good the the guidelines are the the governor's guidelines are available already and are hopefully being provided to our restaurant owners now to figure out the way to do this. But I think the the full board is in support of working together with business owners to help them get on their financial feet again as quickly as they possibly can. And this is one thing that we can get ready now for when the legislation does pass and allow us to do this. Uh, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I can see. Oh, oh Mr. Studo has his hand Hello. raised. Good evening. Thank you, um, the blue hand, I see it. <laughs> the hand. Uh, so just a question, the guidelines are, because I'm just trying to understand them and I'll tell you why in a second, are they, how flexible are the guidelines? And the only reason I ask is because, I'm not gonna tell you which ones, but I definitely was in Boston getting a haircut last week, and there was definitely in-person dining in certain restaurants, fact. I saw it with my own eyes, and it was a few tables apart, and so the question is, I'm not saying ask anybody to break any rules, but are the guidelines like something where kind of like some other things, each town can like kind of decide how flexible or not, or are they stringent? I'm just, it's kind of confusing. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the, the, the short answer is, as we understand it, you know, the, the state's guidelines and orders are the minimum. We are at the local level able to enact through the Board of Health or other regulatory authority more restrictive guidelines or requirements, um, but we do not believe that we have the authority to um, to loosen those requirements um, in terms of you know what what's allowed and what's not allowed. What that doesn't speak to is the instances where somebody you know determines not to comply, and we're you know, either we or another community is not able to stop them from uh, from complying, or that you know perhaps another community opts not to enforce locally and you know, then, then um, you, you end up with a situation where something's happening that's not technically permitted. But generally, our understanding is that we can, and we can enact more restrictive requirements, but not less, one, not less restrictive requirements. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Gilberto on the COVID-19 update? Mr. Gilberto has his hand up. I have a question for Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> Um, the the uh, police chief has reminded me, I, I think some of you are aware that there's been quite a bit of conversation over the past 10 days regarding high school graduation and the events associated with that. And so the Board of Health reviewed um, a, a plan on Thursday evening at their meeting where there would be a uh, parade here in town of uh, the graduates. And it's uh, similar to, I think, some events we've seen in other communities, you know, that that would occur towards the middle to later part of the month of June. And I'll, I'll leave it for the um, North Reading Public Schools to announce the exact date once things are finalized. Um, there's been some discussion about potentially including a recognition, if you will, uh, you know, a point where students are recognized, no gathering, but that there would be a place where, you know, by, on camera or otherwise the graduates are recognized, that they would have the opportunity to have their um, diplomas in hand um, for this parade. Um, and that it would be followed by a, an in-person gathering in the more traditional sense with the social distancing requirements in place on the high school football field after July 18th. And so work continues with regard to that. I also understand that the high schools communicated with regard to some other events that they are working on for students that would be um, associated with the traditional senior week, but maybe not the traditional events. And um, I don't have access to that, de that detail, although I know it has been distributed. Um, I had an email of the detail that was sent to me um, last week, but unfortunately the attachment I wasn't able to open. So um, there is work underway with that. And you know, much to the question that was brought up, we are to the best that we can providing um, the guidance that's been issued at the state level and trying to you know, interpret that guidance and provide um, information to people who are planning events, including North Reading Public Schools, and um, we believe that there's a plan in place for it. But again, I, I would, you know, I'll leave it to the North Reading Public Schools to announce the details for that event as they are, of course, the host. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. And 
no further questions on that, I don't think. The next order of business is um, to sign the June 23rd, 2020 town election warrant. And there is a motion, Madam Chair. Um, yes. you, you, you and some of the board members may be aware that there is legislation out there that may potentially allow for further um, delay of municipal elections, uh, spring elections. And I've spoken with the town clerk and her belief is that the plan that was assembled and approved by this board back in April is the right plan for North Reading um, on Thursday, on Tuesday, June 23rd at St. Teresa's Church with the uh, absentee and early voting by mail um, um, off being offered. Um, and uh, that uh, I believe it's her recommendation. I know she's on the call, but her recommendation is to stick with that date. And honestly, at this point, we don't have the authority to, to postpone it further. Um, beyond um, June 30th, as I understand it. So um, if it's okay, could we, could you, you unmute um, clerk stat so that she can tell us all the availability of different means to vote. Sure. Um, now while we have her on the call and while we have so, her on the meeting. So I just attempted to unmute her. Um, <laughs> To the town clerk, did that did that work? I think you tell me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, it worked. Okay, so as as you said, um, you know, residents and vo uh, voters do have the opportunity to vote right now by absentee by mail ballot or early voted ballot by mail. Okay, there is no in person early voting. Uh, so those are the two pre-election day options. And of course, we, um, the board did vote to have in-person voting only from 12 noon till 6 p.m. on election day to limit all the exposures for everyone involved. So Madam Clerk, for absentee voting by mail, what, what is, that gets mailed out to the voters? Yes, yes. And they find they file an application or send us a letter with their name and voting address and where they would like the ballot mailed to and sign it. Um, if it's a couple in the same home, we can accept one letter as long as both persons sign the letter. Uh, and then we just mail them a ballot and it comes complete packaged with the return envelopes instructions for completing it. And uh, as long as it reaches us by 6 p.m. on Tuesday, June 23rd, um, it would be counted. And, and, and like again, you are accepting that letter, that signed letter via email, right? Yes, we can accept that by email, correct. And then you um, also had told us in our last meeting that COVID-19 is a basis to obtain an absentee ballot. That is correct. Okay. And for an early voted ballot, which is almost the same thing, there's, there's no reason needed. So either option is, is quite available for any voter right now. And can you go over the parameters of early voting for the members of the public? Again, they are basically the same as absentee voting right now. The, you know, the normal parameters for early voting by mail, which only previously occurred um, under the legislation for state elections and then was expanded to uh, be available for the presidential primary, were that early voted ballots could only be released during the early voted pe voting period, the physical in-presence early voting period, which was limited to one week in March and two weeks generally before a state election. But under the new legislation, the um, opportunity for an early voting, voting ballot is available now. It's, there's no restrictions time-wise. So it's very similar to an absentee voting ballot. But the same, the same conditions do apply that a person has to submit an application or, or a letter requesting the early voting ballot. Um, for an absentee ballot, a family member can ask for one for uh, somebody who might be unable to request it themselves and sign for it. Under the uh, law for an early voted ballot, that is only available by the voter themselves. The request must be made by the voter themselves and they cannot make that request on behalf of a family member. 
Okay. So just before we do have a, <laughs> we do have a, I can see you, Mrs. Herbert. We do have a vote, but before we take the vote, I just want to take questions. And Mrs. Herbert, you might as well go first there. <laughs> um, this question is for Barbara. Barbara, it's my understanding that the forms to uh, get both an absentee ballot as well as an early voting ballot are available on your website? Yes, they are. As well as the Secretary of the Commonwealth's website. Your website's easier. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Members have any questions while we have a clerk available? I see none. So can we um, have a motion? Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to sign the June 23rd, 2020 town election warrant. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Gilberto, should Mrs. Gonzalez read that in its entirety? Um, we've not had that, had it read in its entirety. Instead, we've um, stood by the signature of the board members, which we would ask to take place um, tomorrow if possible. Okay. All right. Okay, so a motion and a second. No further questions. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Gun Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, may I just say again too, that under advice of town council, the board does have to physically sign the warrant. So we would need three members at the minimum. We all need it. The quorum of you who come in and um, I would be the witness in this case so if you can um, coordinate one day you know so that we can have one date on the warrant for the date it was signed that would be ideal and, and I'm in all week long so I'm there at your convenience just need to know when okay mr. Walner's raising his hand I can go in tomorrow I can go in tomorrow as well Great. Great. Mr. O'Leary. I can make it tomorrow. So do Thank we you. all have to sign on the same day? <laughs> well, as I said, it would make it easier because the date will go on the warrant. And so it would be ideal to have it on the same date. You know, if you want to sign the warrant, you know, we'll just adjust it and add another date there too for your signature. Okay, no. All right. <laughs> okay. Is there a day, Kate, you could make it? Maybe we can make it too. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. We have time to post this warrant. We're not right. at the timeline right. that we are for the town meeting warrant. Yeah. So if Wednesday is better for everyone, we can do Wednesday, Thursday. Mrs. Gonzalez, you have your hand raised. Did you have uh, a I, I, I can work around you. If, if we make what works for you, we can work around that. I know you're still working. If, if people have Wednesday to drop in, I, that would work much better for me. Is that does that work for everybody else? Yeah. Wednesday it is. All right, perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. So we'll we'll each see you Wednesday, but not together, one at a right. time. And yeah, just let me know what time you're planning to come in. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have the next order of business, which is to sign the June 29th, 2020 town meeting warrant. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, as I indicated in the meeting notes, um, we were um, very, very delayed in getting the draft warrant to town council, but I, I thank them for the quick turnaround to send it back to us. I have gone through it with the finance director and we have um, uploaded it to ShareFile. Um, I know there's been some issues with share files, so I also emailed it to all the board members if you don't have it. Um, I, I'd encourage you to, to bring it up just so that we can all work off the document. It's a nine page document entitled June 2020 Town Meeting Warrant 6 1 2020 to SB for a select board. Does everybody have that document? I have it. Yep. We're good. Great. So, so there's a few things that are, are 
are going on with the, this, you know, um, there's been a couple of conversations on the part of the financial planning team with regard to the, um, the date for the town meeting, the forum for the town meeting. There have been similar conversations with the police chief um, and um, fire chief with regard to um, how, to, how to proceed with the, the date and the forum of the meeting. Um, and they are on the call here as well as the town clerk. And essentially the discussion on the part of the financial planning team was to try to limit the warrants articles to only those that are necessary, um, to try to limit the length of uh, the meeting and the length of time and the amount of time that everyone is, um, is together um, in the space. So what we've done is we've taken this draft warrant and we have effectively highlighted in yellow all of the articles that could be um, taken off the warrant in the interest of shortening the discussion. But as you'll see, there are a number of warrants that relate to the FY 2021 operating budget or the closeout of fiscal year 2020 that require action and they are not highlighted. Um, so while we've narrowed it down, um, you know, there still is a healthy chunk of articles that are on here. Um, five of which articles 27 through 31 um, relate to the school committee's desire to enter into agreements for energy efficiency and other, uh, and in the installation of solar panels on um, the middle high school property. Um, so we, we've not highlighted those as coming off because the school committee has expressed that there may be a financial implication for those. And during our financial planning team discussion, there was uh, you know, some conversation about doing as much presentation in a single presentation as possible and also offering, rather than a town meeting warrant article hearing during a regular select board meeting, having a dedicated evening um, or hearing for people to come in it be, maybe have a little more interaction with the warrant and ask questions to try to minimize the discussion required at the town meeting. So this is all happening fast. Um, the timeline that we are on for a June 29th town meeting would be for the warrant to be signed by this board um, by Friday morning, June 5th. Um, however, there has been some discussion about the possibility of an outdoor meeting and whether having an outdoor meeting, if we were going to do so, not doing so in the evening and instead doing it on a Saturday morning, which would be Saturday, June 27th, which of course will um, accelerate the timeline and require there to be a signed warrant uh, by Wednesday, um, I believe Wednesday at 4 o'clock p.m. So... There's a number of different thoughts and, and opinions that go on to this. Um, and um, I guess, you know, Madam Chair, if you want to summarize the position of the financial planning team, I, I did relay the outcome of that discussion to the uh, public safety folks and town clerk. And I think they do have some comments as well that they'd like to add. But if you'd like to start, that might be good. Sure. So the three things that I'm asking the board to do and consider this evening, which Mr. Gilberto just explained, is pair this pare the warrant articles down to what is absolutely necessary to be passed um, at the town meeting, but and keeping the government keeping our governmental services going with an operating budget that's been approved. So that is why you're seeing the highlighted the highlighted um, sections on that are absolutely necessary to continue operations and budgetary items. The rest Madam, Chair, of, Madam, Madam Chair, it's the opposite, actually. We, we highlighted what could be taken off. Wait a minute. Let me look at what I have. Yeah, the non-highlighted. I'm the sorry. Non I just counted up the wrong ones. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I wish it was that simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. The reason why we want to remove those is we can handle those at a later date, later dated meeting. They're not pressing budgetary matters that need to be considered. Uh, Mr. Gilberto also asked a member of the school um, school department to explain the articles related to LED lights, which is a little bit self-explanatory, as well as um, solar panels. And that comes up to another four or five warrant article items. Um, that is, uh, those are um, projects that are expected to be taking place but that 
it would assist with budgetary matters to have those on the article now and approved for when the school is ready to move forward with those. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we need to decide is are we going to, do we want to have an indoor town meeting or an, or an outdoor town meeting given the COVID-19 pandemic? We have been, um, the superintendent and the, the um, superintendent has said they'll make it happen either way, whatever the pleasure of the board is. The uh, financial planning team met today um, impromptu and discuss this and the majority of the members on the financial planning team would prefer an outdoor meeting and if it would obviously ben be beneficial to have an outdoor meeting on a Saturday. Um, so they were thinking of June 27th being the day for the outdoor meeting. Now keeping in mind, that's the second thing. The third thing that I want to ask the board to consider doing and we would plug in a date for doing this would be to have a pre-town meeting, town meeting, public hearing, so that we get a lot of the questions about the, the items that are on the warrant article in advance, so that maybe people's questions can be answered ahead of schedule, and that will lead to a more expedited voting process at the town meeting, whenever that, whenever that, whether that's on the 27th or the 29th. So that that's another thing. I know that, I'm asking a lot of the members to be meeting, but it's a, just a unique time. And it, it, I think it would help facilitate the process. So what Michael, uh, Mr. Gilberto explained to you is the majority of the members on the financial planning team think an outdoor meeting would be appropriate. How and where that would be, would be on the outside of the school grounds. The logistics of it have to still be worked out. Um, but if we could do our part ahead of that, working with the uh, moderator to address any questions that, that people might have about any of the warrant articles, I think that that might help assist, you know, in terms of who we need there at the town meeting in person. We still need all of our, you know, boards and committees to be there. There's a way to do that with social distancing space. Um, we still need voters, um, but we don't need a quorum at a town meeting. We need at least the majority of the members that show up and, and our town voters to be able to vote on the warrant articles. So I'm pretty sure that explains everything. And I think that we have to make those decisions. It would help the town administrator if we made those decisions this evening because we also have to get this to the printer we have a timeline for that. Mr. Gilberto is raising his hand. I probably left something out. No. So please, Mr. Gilberto, go ahead. No, I, I think you said it all well. I, uh, um, I would only add that I have to, spoken with the town moderator and he um, was uh, hoping to join us this evening, but just is not able to. He indicated that you know he remains flexible in terms of how, um, how we handle things and that um, you know, you, as long as we can, he, I'm reading, as long as we can safely conduct the business of the town, I'll, I will remain flexible. So, um, you know, he's obviously, you know, feeling the same balance that we're trying to feel, which is the you know, efficiency of conducting the town's business with the, the uh, you know, the safety concerns that are out there. Um, one of the things that we did discuss was because of the complex nature of the pending uh, potential real estate transaction with a turkey farm, that the you know that that action on that item either on the june town meeting warrant or on the special town meeting warrant would be postponed and um we do have the statutory statutory ability to um to postpone it by virtue of some legislation approved in the month of april or early may um which would allow us to consider it a, a yeah, that that type of discussion at a later point in time and i, I think it was a consensus of everybody involved that there's likely to be a, a number of people who want to come express their opinion on that transaction um and that um there would be a large crowd and that it, it, that during this time unfortunately just might not be the time for us to do that I, i'd also note that you know I, i've heard from a number of folks you know that there's legislation pending at the state level on this and there is um but the the, the versions of the bill that i am aware of include a relaxing of the quorum requirement for a special town meeting which would obviously be beneficial to north reading when it comes to the um, special town meeting action proposed on the turkey farm 
but in that that is not law at this point in time and, and also that the um there are proposals for remote participation at town meeting but those proposals in their form as proposed are only available to towns with a representative town meeting form of government which of course we do not have we have an open town meeting so for those who have you know heard these things i just want to you know outline what they are and where they stand in the, in the legislative process. Um, and they just are not avenues available to us yet. <clears throat> so Madam Chair, through you, I think the first idea is just more so the concept, right, of you know, paring down the warrant and effectively taking off the items that are highlighted. I would imagine that would be the first point of discussion that we'd want to consider. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'll go through very quickly just for the public. Um, Michael, can you share your screen on this um, with the highlighted version? Gonna, oh, no. it's, uh, it's gonna be a little little bumpy, but let me try. I, <laughs> that I, I that don't might have help a... in terms of reviewing it for everybody. Let's see if I can do that. So unfortunately my work computer does not have a a um, a webcam with it, so I'm using my phone. Um, but let's see if I can log myself in. Well, I mean, that, that's okay. If you can't do it, I just thought it might be helpful. Do the members have the oh, highlighted uh, version? <laughs> it looks like I can do it. Can you look at the hot, look on with the highlighted version? Oh, there we go. Perfect. There you go. Great. I can't believe that actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> <didn't either. laughs> so going through articles one and two relate to the turkey farm. Um, they are also on the warrant for the special town meeting. In, in the iteration of the warrant we're talking about, they would not be on the warrant signed by the select board. Article three, the budget amendment, that's going to require action in all likelihood relative to this current year's budget um, for proper closeout of the year. So uh, finance director advises me that that article, along with the snow and ice deficit, article number four, appropriation into the capital improvement stabilization fund both four and five are related to our fiscal year 21 financial plan and require action to close out this year and make available funds for next year same for article six article seven would be an anticipated potential transfer into um, the stabilization fund in advance of potential needs in a future fiscal year so that would probably be the balance of free cash unexpended um, Article eight, this is again a transfer that uh, it will be relevant for the financing that we're gonna talk about in the next agenda item for the budget. Article nine, the same, um, a transfer that we make on the solid waste stabilization fund each year. Article 10, um, the selection of town officers. Uh, honestly, I, I, I believe that we need to take action on that. I'm not, I don't know how we can avoid that since it gives you the authority to make appo certain appointments. And in, I think in some cases through you, um, some appointments that I may make as well. But I don't think we need to hear and act on the reports of the town officers and committees at, at this meeting. And if someone knows otherwise, certainly let me know. I'm saying, I'm directing that to the town clerk and town council who are on the call. Um, authorization for directing, uh, for the director of public works to accept some easements. Um, that's a routine thing that uh, occurs as development occurs here in town and um, if not acted upon, could have a delay on some development. Again, it, it, there's no particular project that's in this, it's authority that's being granted. Same for uh, uh, compensating balance agreements. Chapter 90 funding, that's gonna be the only funding that's gonna be approved at this point for the fiscal year, um, for fiscal year 21 construction, so we need to authorize that. Um, prior year bills, um, I, I believe we're aware of at least one um, that's out there that will require some action. Um, Article 16 is the operating budget, but many of the articles I just read to you are required in order to prepare us to actually approve that budget, the financing for it. The finance director who is on this call, and I thank her for her efforts on this. We don't believe there's any rescission for authorization of borrow that we need to take up at this point. Article 18 is a capital plan that was reviewed with the select board at the last meeting. Um, it's a pared back plan, particularly in the area of the general fund. Um, with only a handful of items, but uh, we do wish to see action taken on that. Article 19, which we would do to fund miscellaneous town building repairs, I'm suggesting that we hold off on that. Article 20, funding of retirement obligations, that's something we need to do for the upcoming year. It's related to the operating budget. And Article 21, um, 
appropriating fund use of, uh, appropriating funds to the other post employment benefit liability trust fund that's also part of our fiscal year 21 plan um, so that that's the end of the articles that relate to fiscal year 2021 or annual things that we need to, to get authorized and you can see there are a number of them um, that, that tie into all of this but we've removed the ones that don't require action in our estimation at this point it's 15 if i counted correctly michael mr gilberto it's thank you very much and so that leads us to um, article 22 the pfa that's something that we customarily deal with in october so we can pass over or, or i should say we can leave that article off the warrant article 23 that we don't expect a request for special counsel legal expenses so we've suggested that could be taken off the warrant Article 24, appropriating money for legal expenses for 20 Elm Street litigation. Board members may remember that we made a transfer of funds during the October town meeting last year. This would allow us to reappropriate those funds as transferred into an article that would be a standing available funding source for next fiscal year or a future fiscal year. And we're expecting to add to the tune of $50,000 to that so that we are prepared to follow through the project on any of the potential tracks that it might take as well as any uh, review that it may require at the local level or otherwise so that'd be fifty thousand dollars in new funding in addition to what we've already appropriated which would be reappropriated in this article that that again as the board knows would leave that money available for us um, on a standing basis moving forward establishing the fund or the account for historical buildings uh, I, I think that that's an important one but it's also one that we have not quite been able to get our arms around a vehicle that would allow us to both accept donations and contribute general fund money um, but regardless I, I think it's something that we would um, that we ought to be holding off on at this point um, just because it's not essential at the moment although it is very important and the same is up for article 26 and we're looking to correct a practice that's been taking place and align it with the town meeting authority but uh, at this stage I think that it can um, that we can defer action on it um at this point articles 27 through 31 and timing is everything because i believe the representatives of the school committee are signing on they all relate to a project that uh, i want to just commend the school committee and the school administration for working really hard on particularly mr conley mike conley the business uh, manager assistant finance director uh, assistant superintendent for finance and operations quite a bit of work has gone in and they got bids in i think last week and so um, it, it, it does relate to funding, um, a potential funding opportunity for the fiscal year 21 school department budget, as I understand it. And so we'll come back to those in a moment, but uh, fiscal year 22 revaluation, re that is something the finance director advises me we need to you know, be, be dealing with because it's a statutory issue. Article 33, which would fund a Main Street redesign and study um, for a potential TIP program. Um, I think it's a very important project. I just I don't think it's something that we're going to be able to take up as essential at this June town meeting. Um, and that's it's a disappointment, but I just think it's it's a much more involved project that will have you know potential impact and a significant expense. And I just don't think that we're at the point to be able to to take up action on it. That was the fast version. How did I do? No, oh, that's that's <laughs> that's perfect. That still leaves us with quite a few articles to it does. to address. And and um, our chair, our like Mr. Gilbert said, uh, if if Mr. Buckley, uh, Mr. Buckley, actually our our chair of the school committee, our business director, and our, I thought I saw yes, our superintendent have joined us from their meeting. How do they get out so early? You know. <laughs> so if if any one of you would That's like to a bigger gavel. It'd, be, it would be great to, it would be great to hear um just a quick rundown maybe from you mr mr connelly or whoever would like to just sure. speak to these um what we did explain in the beginning of our meeting is that you want the opportunity to move forward on these and that would would be extremely beneficial for these to be approved at our June town meeting, if at all possible, to be to give you the option to move forward when when you're ready to move forward on these uh, on these items. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, we, you know, some of these couple of these projects started back in in August, and when we had our school committee goals workshop, and you know, we certainly wanted to focus a little bit more on how this, the school department could look to save. 
you know, put in some energy efficiency measures and, and, and save, and we, we, we certainly try to do that. And it, it, it's tended to focus on LED lighting, the benefits of LED lighting, and then, and then solar um, kind of became the, the two options that we aggressively pursued. So with the solar project, um, we actually accepted proposals on Friday, May 22nd was the due date. Um, it was the, the RFP um, can really allowed a few different options for the, the potential bidders to, uh, to, to bid on. Um, one was uh, using the, the roof, the, the, the middle school and the high school roof uh, to, to build the, the array, as well as the potential for a, a ground array adjacent to the back parking lot. Um, they could also, on their pricing proposal, um, elect to bid sort of a fixed operating lease where they would just be somewhat just renting our, our space and we would be accepting a, a monthly and annual rental lease payment, operating lease payment. Or they could uh, bid us uh, uh, an option to, we would actually look to try to use the supply and the energy that the array is producing and enter into some type of a three-way, you know, purchasing agreement, power purchasing agreement with the awarded developer and our utility company, obviously RMLD, um, to, to try to you know, actually use the energy and be, be build a sort of a fixed price with um, kind of a three-way three -way agreement. Um, so the, the first the point of the first article is essentially to allow the, 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 the space, the school department, you know, the space with the middle school and the high school roof and the potential of the ground area to be used for a purpose other than, you know, certainly the education um, aspect and allow us to certainly, you know, install the, the array and, and accept the lease payments on those two areas of school property um, other than its intended purpose. Um, so that, that is the, the point of Article 27. Um, I will say, just sort of as a point of information, the, none of the, pro the, the proposer um, developers that bid on the, the job felt that the, the ground area adjacent to the parking lot uh, was a good site. So they came out and did their site visits, they did their measurements, they, none of them bid on that option. So that, that's kind of off the table, would not be considered. So we would not be looking to, to install a, um, a solar system on, on the ground area. So there would not be any conduit running under the ground or easements or a butter situation um, in, in that, on that area of the school property. Uh, what they did bid on was the use of the middle school and the high school roof. Um, and you know, s several bids came in, s some bid on both options, which would be the, the operating fixed lease payment uh, for use of the roof space, and some, some also bid, uh, you know, the, the kind of the PPA power purchasing aspect. Um, so the Article 28 would essentially allow us to enter into that type of an agreement um, with the awarded developer and also our utility company, RMLD. So it's sort of authorizing us to go ahead and do that and look to use the supply of, of um, energy from such an array. Um, I will say that upon initial review of the proposals, even though a couple of the, the developers chose to bid this option, based on uh, the price provided, it does not look like it's advantageous for us to do that. Um, you know, we would not be, you know, the fixed price that we would then be paying and then entering into an agreement with the developer and RMLD is not so much discounted from what we're already receiving with RMLD that it does not look like it's from a revenue standpoint or a cost saving standpoint that it's, it's very advantageous for us to do that. Um, from a financial standpoint, it was more advantageous for us to pursue the pr proposals that bid the fixed operating lease payment. Uh, which would address Article 27. So Article 29, um, again, goes along with the project. It would be required um, regardless of what, what um, option we choose, and that's to negotiate a, a payment in lieu of taxes. So there would certainly be an assessed value of the array the developer would install, um, and um, there would need to be an, sort of an annual payment in lieu of taxes that would need to be negotiated with the with the town and the, and the awarded developer 
Um, I don't think we're speaking, talking about a, a lot of money here. Um, probably certainly no more than a thousand dollars or so it would, would probably be something that would be negotiated. Um, but that would be a required step in the process. And I believe through town council, there's, there's an award, there's a, it requires a town meeting article. Um, Mr. Connolly, did you want, I don't mean to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but you, you did want to keep article 28 in or, uh, or remove it for a later date when that may become a potential option. We could, I think we, we could keep it there and just pass over it. If, you know, we're still going through these proposals. It's been, it's been about a week. Uh, we probably need a couple more days to fully sort through everything and, and, make, and make sure we have dotted the I's and crossed the T's. But from the conversations I've had with the folks that are helping me review the proposals, it, it really does not look like that's a very advantageous option to pursue. So most likely it would, it would not be something we're interested in. Um, so, I mean, I think we, if we're, the goal is to really shorten it, I would say we could just remove that so we don't even have to kind of get into it or discuss it um, would be my thought process on it right now. Okay. Um, and then that final, the final one there, which is addresses the revolving accounts. Um, you know, I think there was some debate whether or not that, you know, legally, whether or not we needed that, that, that I think, or, or needed town meeting action on that, but I think we felt it was certainly something that was, um, you know, good due, due diligence for us to, to do, but it would just be an establishment of a revolving account um, to take in the annual lease payment should we reach a point where we have agreed to such a contract with a developer um, to, to, to establish a revolving account for these lease payments to be, to be deposited into on a monthly basis. Okay. Do the members have any questions? I know that this is the first time that some of you are hearing about this. And I do think that if we do the, if we also have a pre-town meeting, you know, hearing on these things that we can get some more elaborate details if necessary. And that might actually give the school department the opportunity to review its documents too and have a more firm, firmer plan for us at that point. But because it's the first time you've, you've heard this, are there any questions you might want to ask preliminarily? Mr. Walner, I see your hand up. Mr. Walner. And for everything that we are planning to push off, when would it come up again? The October meeting? Well, are you talking about this, the, the, the rest of the warrant articles or the school department articles? No, not just school department. I'm talking now overall. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I think the, the goal is just to carry them forward to the October town meeting. The ones that we, we would, the 10 that we would be pulling off the warrant just to streamline the, the warrant would be put onto the October town meeting warrant art, as warrant articles on the October town meeting. Not, not eliminating them, but just continuing them there in the hopes that, you know, we'll have a better opportunity to address them in a, lengthier town meeting than what this COVID-19 town meeting is anticipated to be. Okay, thank you. Did, did anyone have any questions of those schools presentations? And, and does anyone have any questions about, I can't see all of you, but Mr. Gilberto, does anyone have a hand up? Mr. O'Leary, are you all set? I don't see any hands. You're all set. Mr. No, Walker, do you have any other? I'm sorry, Mr. O'Leary. You know, just a comment that you know what's being proposed here to my colleagues, you know, through the financial planning team meeting again is we're trying to avoid a one twelfth budget first and foremost. We're trying to have a budget in place uh, come July first so we can operate normally. Um, and again, the articles that are being suggested to pass over until October are not critical to that. They're not time sensitive. Uh, as far as the the school department uh, authorization for these. Um, few articles, they are time sensitive in relation to the bids uh, staying in place and you know, not having to go back out to bid again. And that there's a possibility and a high likelihood that a lot of this can be accomplished over the summer months. So that if we don't act on it at, at the June town meeting, uh, opportunities will be pushed off and potentially the uh, revenue stream, which will be generated from this may be pushed off uh, to another fiscal year. So we're trying to capitalize on the timing of, of the issues what's important from a timing standpoint and just make sure we have an operating budget 
to move forward. The, the rest of it, we're not looking to uh, do anything other than you know, push it off till October town meeting or a special town meeting at some future date uh, to address the issues that are already on the warrant. And, and I'm actually to just piggyback upon what Mr. O'Leary said, just for the newer members in terms of the review of these budgets, uh, the school department with the, the new building saw a tremendous increase in the costs associated with maintaining an energy cost. So the revolving fund here, just so um, anyone who's listening is clear, that money doesn't, that the article proposes to take the funds from the lease. They won't go into um, general fund. The fund from the lease as proposed will go back into a revolving account to assist the school with that significant expense and offsetting that expense that they've had to you know ha that has increased for them um with the new school building is that right mr connelly did we yes, say all that correctly that's correct okay absolutely thank you all right any other so mr walner any other questions comments comments i'll just uh so the out or moving on to the, the going outdoors is that okay to comment on that Oh, of course. Okay, I didn't know if we wanted to say. I know we we yeah. kind of lumped all of them in together. Yeah, I didn't uh, address the LED lighting one, but. Um, sorry. No, I think he's talking, Mr. Connolly. I think he. Oh, you didn't address it. You want to address that one? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I thought you were all done. I'm sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the LED lighting project. I think we all know the benefits of LED lighting and and the, the cost that can be gained through a more efficient you know, lighting system. Um, we, we essentially, essentially the bulk, almost the majority of the lighting at all of the four schools and um, campuses on, on the school property are essentially the fluorescent lighting system. So we, we did do an RFP and we accepted proposals in from approved firms to um, retrofit or replace all the existing fixtures with LED lights. Uh, we, we had, you know, very much thought that this would be advantageous from a cost perspective, um, and it, that certainly proved to be the case. Um, we had we had presented in the past, uh, you know, diff different types of projects um, through the capital planning committee, um, and we didn't want to, um, to, you know, take up available funds for other pertinent town projects. So what we are proposing here is something that wouldn't wouldn't flow through the, the CIPC process, but it would it would be a sort of a five year lease that we would pay off with the savings that we would achieve in those first five years. And then beyond the five years, we would then reap the full operational savings from, from the LED efficient lighting. The estimates in the proposals is that we would save anywhere between, based on the operational hours, um, 85,000 to $100,000 annually. Um, and the, the, the cost of the project's a little under $500,000 after the, the, the rebate program with the RMLD, so it would take us about five years to pay off the, um, the term, and then we would see the, the full operational benefit. So the reason why it's here at town meeting is because we do need a article to approve us entering into a five-year lease um, term to, to, to pay off the, the project. And then I just, I just want to note as well that the, the solar, the benefit on the solar, at least initially, um, is, a, is anywhere between 102,000 and potentially 120,000 with, with, what, with what could be the operating lease. So between the two projects, we, you know, we're, I think we're talking almost you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in terms of you know, cost savings or, or revenue. That, I think that's why we're, we're seeing them as, as Mr. O'Leary alluded to earlier as, as time sensitive. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this just pertains to my comments on the, um, the articles in general. First, uh, I want to thank the town clerk for communicating with me by email. Um, we believe that there may be a statutory obligation to hear uh, reports of officers and committees which is largely the written printed report that Karen worked so hard on. So we may not be able to nix that one from the warrant. Although what I would suggest is with the moderator, we not accept verbal reports 
that evening and just re refer to the written report if he's agreeable to that. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a that's a change from what what we were discussing. Um, the second thing is there's a couple of areas where the wrong fiscal year is actually in there. So, Article 13, it should be fiscal year 2021. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Town Clerk. And Article 30. Two to the finance director, Liz, if you're there, is this a 22 or 21 reevaluation? It would be a 20, FY21 reval. So it's not 22? No. Okay, so I'll change it to read 21. All right, and there was another item. Oh, um, Attorney Klein, are you are you there? Yes, I'm here. So I got a response back with regard to Article 31 concerning the LED project here, and I had had a question about consistency with the charter. That the email I got back, which I think you were copied on, indicated that we didn't believe there was an inconsistency, which. I, I agree with, although I'm questioning down here why the school committee or designee would certify to me on the, on this component of it. And I, I'm not saying it shouldn't be that way. It's just a little unclear to me. Well, I, I think that at different stages when we were reviewing it, and obviously we didn't have a lot of time, that we were still looking for information on whether the lighting was just going to be on school property or or certain town as well. So we are the way that we reviewed articles 27 to two through 31 was to view them as broadly as possible because we can obviously pair it down through the motion. What we can't do is go outside the scope through the motion. So that's why we drafted it broadly. We realized we still have some questions ourselves on article 31 that we need to sort of address after, after town meeting. But the way it's drafted, any changes we need to make would be of the narrow, the more narrow variety, which we can do through the motion. What we didn't want to do is put ourselves in a situation where you had to make a modif modification that would be beyond the scope of the article. Okay. So th this language about the school committee certifying and writing to the town administrator that the longer term will enable the town to secure more favorable terms, you believe that that language is correct as written for the, in the intent? Yeah, I mean, knowing now that it's just the lighting is just going to be on the school property, we, we might be able to, to modify that. But I, I well, think I, I still think, want a little more information. Darren, I think, Attorney Klein, I, I think that we, the idea of leaving it open for a potential authorization for a, a, a municipal building project, I think that we're, I think that's a good strategy in the writing. I just, I guess I didn't know whether the school committee ought to be certifying to me or to the select board. Well, I think you as the chief administrative officer is fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate that. I'm just sorry, the administrator signs about. all contracts too. Yeah. Correct. So I, I know who I would prefer to work with. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you to the town clerk for uh, her uh, comments back. Okay, so we had, Mr. Walner, you were all set with comments, questions. We'll talk about what we're going to decide. How about just let's focus on the warrant articles and um, and the answer to your question is if there's something removed or eliminated, it's going to it's going to be considered in October. At least that's the plan. Um, and do we have um, any questions from Mr. Schultz? Comments, questions? No. no. All set. Mrs. Gonzalez, questions or comments? All set. Okay, so are we all uh, in agreement that we'll incorporate or we'll, we'll, we're paring it down from 33 to 24 just to facilitate uh, COVID 19 town meeting? Um, is that right, Mr. Gilberto? I added yes. back in the here and act on. I, I didn't, I didn't right. think that one could come out anyway, but I think we're, so we'll, we're in agreement that when we are, well, we do, we do need to vote to sign the warrant. It'll, it won't be this version, 
it will be the version with those provisions that we just discussed and incorporate the um, school department's LED and um, solar paneling uh, articles as well. Okay. That's our uh, the first thing we have to address in this Correct. agenda item. So I think, do, do I have um, any other questions as we talk about this? Seeing no further questions, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, have you made a determination yet as to the location before you sign this warrant? Are we clear on where we're meeting yet? I think that's part two of the discussion. Okay. That's next. Okay. Thank I'll you, hold Madam on. Clerk. Thank you, Madam Town Clerk. So this this uh, warrant has June 29, twenty twenty, seven p.m. We also need to decide um, the date. So indoor meeting, I think it's fair to say that we would be holding the indoor meeting on the 29th, if that's what the board would like to do. As we've discussed, the financial planning team, the consensus of the financial planning team is to have an outdoor meeting. Um, and the thought was to ha hold that on Saturday, the 27th, outdoor on the on school grounds and the superintendent has um indicated they will help and make that happen however whichever the decision is that that this they're um they're going to help make that happen with us so there's some logistics that need to be worked out indoor indoor the presumption would be um that it would be check in right immediately and then go to the gym that that we felt that would be sufficient and there could be an overflow room available um, but not a whole heck of a lot of people show up on a non-covid day so we may or may or may not need that option outdoor there was some discussion of having it either as a drive-in check-in drive-in uh, type of situation with for for town voters only showing up. And um, some, you know, we need to work out the logistics of where the moderator can go, where, you know, uh, equipment can go to show, you know, to, to show things and speak about things and so on and so forth. The goal being with this pre-town meeting, town meeting that we can have um, to go over everything that maybe that would eliminate or limit uh, questions that might come up and give the voters every, every opportunity in advance, especially voters that don't want to even go to the town meeting this year, the opportunity to kind of review these and, and ask questions ahead of time so that a lot of that legwork we can do. So that was the thought. I don't know if there's anything else, Mr. Gilberto or Mr. O'Leary that I'm missing on those. Um, so we really need to decide for this warrant, it's gonna include the date and time and location. So we know it'll be on school grounds. It's just a matter of, and then we'll have to publicize, you know, this will be different. If we do do it outside, it's gonna be quite different. So we'd have to publicize that. Um, thinking a little bit differently this year, it requires a little bit of, a little bit of changes. So did I miss anything? No, the only thing, Madam Chair, is in the case of inclement weather, weather posted it for outside, it would then move into the gymnasium. Mr. Gerberto, anything else we're missing? No, I, I think that you, you've got it all. I mean, I, I would say that I, I have a few folks on here who have different you know, points of view that I, I think is important for everybody to hear. Um, probably, you know, most significantly from um, the, um, the public safety and public health folks. So, um, Mr. Bracey, are you uh, are you on? Maybe not. Okay. Oh no, Bob is there. He's muted though. I 
Attorney Klein, were you raising your hand to speak while we're trying to add people in? Did you have something to contribute? I was just, uh, through, through you, Madam Chair, I was just going to say, um, instead of putting the uh, Performing Arts Center, you could just put North Reading High School grounds, which would allow you some flexibility. Obviously, we would need the signs to be, we would want to advertise in advance and be sure that the signs were clear enough that people knew where they were going on the night of town meeting. I think if you put uh, North Reading High School grounds, you're covered uh, in either an outdoor or indoor area. Thank you. I think at this point, this it's June 1st, and I think we need to make a decision one way or the other where we're going to be, folks. I think it's time to... We have the support of the school department, the superintendent to make it happen either indoor or outdoor. And I think we just need to let, I think we just need to decide. Hello? I know that we're gonna Hello? get more. Hi, Bob. Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Bracey. Thank you. Oh, all right, there we go. We're Sorry just in a discussion about indoor or outdoor town, town meeting. We know it'll be on the school grounds, but uh, Mr. Gilberto has asked for your input so that we can make a decision on this and put put the location on the warrant. Um, so it, it would be in my opinion. I, I I've talked to a few people, uh, some colleagues from from surrounding communities to kind of get an idea of what folks are doing uh, based on the guidance from DPH. Um, you know, we could do it indoor and outdoor. But I, I do believe that based on the guidelines, um, we can, you know, easily do this indoors at the gymnasium, uh, working with the director of public safety and the fire chief. Um, so I, I see that we have multiple options um, in being able to do this based on uh, the guidance that we have today. Okay, thank you. Does it, do the members have any questions of Mr. Bracey? All set? Madam Chair, I can't, uh, I, know the I can't see if anyone's raising their hand. So. Uh, so the town clerk had the town clerk does have her hand up. So I think she could, never put I know she hand wanted hand. to speak earlier. <laughs> yeah, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, you. You know, logistically, it certainly would be a, a better flow to do it indoors. Um, what we were talking about in uh, about the outdoor venues and whether it's a, a drive up venue, which would be difficult to uh, check in people. Um, oh, am I coming through? I'm not sure. Yes, you are. Yes. Um, if you had uh, several people, two or three people in a car that were coming, you know, because we had talked about would it parking lot versus the field, um, there would be a difficulty in segregating people who were not registered voters. And I'm not sure you could actually keep people away, you know, who were not registered voters. You know, we it vote to admit them, but I'm not sure you could uh, not allow them. Um, so I, you know, in order to maintain some um, uh, control over the voters so we have uh, an accurate count of how many people are there in the event that we had hand counts or um, we needed to do uh, paper balloting or something like that we have to have that hard number to to go against to make sure that we are doing an accurate count um, if, if we can set up chairs and distance them ahead of time so that people who attend meeting frame how they have to uh, seat themselves. Um, I think we would have better control over the town meeting in general and uh, in conducting it, in the flow of it, in, in being certain that we have an accurate check-in list and uh, if we needed to take hand counts, an accurate count to check against that. Um, those are my considerations here. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's let's just 
quickly poll the members. What do you think, Mr. O'Leary, indoor or outdoor? Uh, personally, I think I think indoor, the gymnasium. All right, Mr. On, Walmer. On, on oh, Saturday. I'm sorry. On Saturday. Indoor. <laughs> I throw it all off. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Walner. Yeah, my gut is, uh, you know, if it's outside, you're hoping it's not going to rain, and then you're hoping it's cloudy because if it's sunny, you're going to bake out there. So I think the risk is pretty high for doing it outside. So I think inside makes sense. I don't know why we would go to a Saturday though. I think we just keep our original time, um, and I'm also not expecting a tremendous amount of people because we've already taken out you know, anything that might be controversial that would drive up high numbers of voters. So I don't think we're going to have necessarily a lot of people coming to this, um, to this event. So I think inside gymnasium, I'm not sure why we couldn't even do social distancing within the uh, performing center, but that's doesn't, six to one half doesn't, so I think it should be inside. Thank you. Inside, so Mr. O'Leary is uh, inside on the Saturday. Mr. Walner is inside on the Monday. Mr. Schultz. I'm a little different than both of them. I think it should be outside. I think you can put people in the football stands. You can have it at night so, so the lights are on, like a football game would be on, so it would be a little cooler. I think you want to encourage as many people as possible to come. I don't think seniors are going to come inside the school because of the COVID pandemic. I think you have to go to a place where you can really spread out. Be the football stands, you can really spread out there. Um, you can space stands. Uh, you have a PA system there already. Uh, and I wouldn't do it during the day because I think uh, Mr. Wall is correct. You would bake if you do it outside during the day. But um, I think people are going to be afraid to come if we do it inside. Um, I'm hearing that from a lot of seniors now. They're afraid to even go out to a store. They're not going to come to a crowded town meeting. So I, I think if our goal is to get the most people we can there. We should do it outside this time. Okay, outside and on Saturday? No, I would do it at night and I would do it, I would use oh, the football stand where people can sit because you could really spread out there. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez. That was a, a curve ball, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a nice idea. I'm, I'm, do, I'm not sure about the seniors being able to climb up in those stands though. I think that might be difficult for some of them. I'm thinking inside. I think I'm going to vote for inside. Um, yeah, gymnasium, if that's that's where we could distance the best, then that's wherever we can distance the best and get people to come. Okay. And do you have a Saturday or a, a Monday? I think we would stay with a Monday night if it's inside. Yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in agreement. Jeff, I think it's important to, uh, to note that we also discussed uh, the gymnasium because of the proximity to the door and then the need that's going to have to take place to sanitize the facility yeah. afterwards and that uh, we were trying to minimize um, the usage of, of, the, of the building mm -hmm. total. So it, uh, that's why we we're talking about the gymnasium instead of the performing arts center and uh -huh. overflow. We'll deal with it if we have to. <clears throat> and I, I just think it's important for us to to decide this this evening and then we will work out all of those details and publicize them so that whoever does plan to attend will know um, and be prepared for that so I, I think I agree I agree with you did I lose you can you hear me we can hear you, yep, we hear you. Yep. I agree with um, the majority of the members so I, I think we should just Keep it on the Monday night, on the 29th, in the gymnasium, um, and just work with the school department on what needs to be done to get it um, ready in advance and what we need to do to publicize. It's going to be a little bit different this time around. So. <laughs> Felt like a game of Clue in the gymnasium on Monday. <laughs> yeah, we... If, with the microphone. <laughs> okay. All right. So do we, so in, in voting to approve this pared down warrant, we're going to also say, continue to keep it at June 29th. That's what it's going to be June 29th at 7 PM. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So do I have a, um, 
Any further discussion? Okay, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to sign the June 29, 2020 town meeting warrant for Monday evening in the gym museum at the high school. High school property. Hi. Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Fix is our my, motion, please. Is my screen, uh, no, I think, I think you got it. Um, is my screen sharing? You just can see that what I've done here is I've changed Performing Arts Center to gymnasium to meet at the gymnasium, North Reading High School, Park Street, and said North Reading on Monday, the 29th of June, Perfect. 2020, at seven o'clock. And so this would no longer be highlighted. This will become um, final, if you will. And then we'll be taking off articles one, two, 17, 19, 22, 23. 25, 26, and 33. And the uh, police chief has asked me, and I'm sure if the public health director is still on, he would echo this as well. Um, you know, in, in the instance that the public health metrics change as such to impact the public health and public safety recommendations, and town council can certainly weigh in and correct me if I'm wrong, the moderator does have the ability to change the location. So if the metrics were to change for some reason, and we don't anticipate that they will, but if they were, we do have the ability to change the location up to and including being outside. Um, and Attorney Klein, is, is that correct? Uh, through the, Madam Chair, uh, that is correct. Uh, what would have to happen, uh, assuming what would, what would have to happen is the moderator would need to open the meeting and the clerk would be there and probably one member of the board and there would be a motion to change the venue. Um, and obviously everyone else would already be notified and waiting for the moderator. Um, it can easily be done. Okay. Thank, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Klein. All right. So I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Ma Mr. Madam Chair. I apologize, but I, does the town clerk have her hand up? Still? No. I think she just okay. leaves it up. So we'll. <laughs> She didn't. <laughs> it's gone now. Sorry about that. That's all right. I just I, I know you're watching the details. No, that's <laughs> okay. We welcome your input. It's appreciated. All right. So Mr. O'Leary's recorded as yay, Mr. Walner. Oh yes, not yay. Yes, Mr. Walner. Yes. Oh, say yay. I'm excited about it. Yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Schultz. No. Oh boy, Mr. Um, Miss, Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, folks. I think it Madam makes it a little bit easier. Mr. Gilberto. I, I agree. And I, I, you know, for all the people involved in the discussions, this board included the financial planning team, the public safety and public health officials who have been involved. I just, I wanna thank everybody for really, you know, giving it their best to try to make the best recommendation from their particular vantage point. You know, there's no easy answers for this. And for the public who's watching at home, if it looks like, you know, we don't have things in order, you know, it's far from it. You know, instead we're trying to balance all of the competing, you know, issues that are out here along with the business of the town and health and safety. And, and um, you know, you just seen, you know, all of those things sort of come up for the discussion. I, I, and I just, I wanna thank everybody for their efforts to try to, tackle a difficult issue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, it is It is just to add to that, the financial planning team meets once a month and has increased its meeting schedule considerably, not, you know, not only for budgetary items, but to determine these items as well. So we appreciate the input of everybody that participates on that, on that team as well. Um, the, Madam on. Chair? Yes, Madam Clerk, yes. Yes, yes, now my hand is up. Um, I just wanted to mention also, just, just like the town meeting warrant, this warrant has to be physically signed by the members as well. So if the warrant is ready, if Mr. Gilberto can have it ready on Wednesday when the board members are coming to sign the election warrant, we can do uh, both at the same time. Will do. That's perfect. The, 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 the posting warrant will be ready. The 
printed to be mailed warrant will not be, but we will get it ready by Friday when it needs to be picked up by the printer. I have a question. Excellent. I see, Mrs. Thank Gonzalez. You. Thank you. Mrs. Before, before Barbara leaves us, um, how do you yep. want us to contact you, Barbara, to let you know when we're coming? What's the best way Just to contact you? You can email me. Mr. Schultz already did. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, through you, for, you know, for all the members, um, for those who have not been in town hall recently, we do have an area set up at the entryway of the town hall. Um, where the documents can be signed with a, uh, um, a safety, you know, plexiglass there. And, um, you know, we just would, you know, if you contact Barbara, you can meet her there in the lobby and we can get you to sign the document uh, and can then get you on your way. So on, on this topic and the idea is, is, is are the members in agreement that we could have a sort of like a pre town meeting meeting and invite voters to participate in a dialogue back and forth on these warrant articles, questions, invite reports of our offices if necessary. Because if, if you are in agreement that we handle it this way, um, once the article is published and is mailed to, to um, people's homes, we could you know set, schedule that as well. Um, Abby, Mrs. Hurlbut has her hand up. Yeah, um, I have a question. You know, uh, most people in this town don't tend to read the paper or do anything else. And so, but they do look at the warrant. So if there's some way you can put a notice about the uh, free town meeting, town meeting or whatever. It's a great on, idea. On the face of the warrant, then I think everybody would see that. But that would mean that by Friday, you need to decide when it's going to take place. I, I have one other comment. Well, I have a lot of other comments, but I'll leave it at one. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, are you, do you think that it would be better to have the town meeting Monday night a little earlier, like say five or six? And the reason why I'm suggesting this is I think once you leave that storm out of that town meeting, and you get into a darkened parking lot, it's a lot harder to socially distance. And you're a lot less aware of who's around you. I think we just voted it at seven. So yeah, you did. I think that's- I, I had my hand up earlier, no one Oh, I didn't me. see it, I'm, I'm okay. sorry. Not a problem, it's just a thought. It, it always, can I just jump in for a second? Just sure, Mr. Walner, go ahead. It, it, always, it always takes a good half an hour before the meetings ever get started because people have to check in. If anything, it would be good to advertise that we really want to start promptly at 7 o'clock, so they should be there at 6.30 because that's, you know, that's, it's always this getting the people through the line that, that delays the meeting. Anyone else have any thoughts on... Uh, the moderator can start the meeting at seven o'clock because there is no quorum requirement. And uh, oh, there you go. Get, it, go. get it going. You know, it's up to the moderator to get the gavel going. So he but can start it right at seven o'clock and move it along. You're going to have to socially distance people as they sign in. It's not going to be everybody crowded around the table waiting for somebody to sign you in. It's going Correct. to take a lot longer. You know, which is another reason why you might want to think about starting it early. Mm -hmm. it, just saying. Again, I would just say, going back to Steve's comment, if he can get started without even a quorum requirement, I mean, some of this is just routine. Yeah. yeah I, I think the important point to, to state tonight is that what we've done is we've pared down the warrant to just take care of the budget, which again is uh, very tight, and that's coming up next in our, our agenda to talk about. There won't be much to talk about, you know, as far as as far as the budget goes. This is what's being offered, and this is what it is. The other articles are rather routine, and I don't expect any controversy or any debate on much of anything, if anything, that's going to be presented. So it's this is going to be a bit unusual in, in that we're deliberately and intentionally avoiding debate. You know, because there's nothing to talk about, but it's action that needs to be taken. Well, and I also think what we can do to to Mrs. Hurlbut's point is put in there, you know, to to try to arrive 
at least in sufficient time in advance to socially distance check yourself in so we can put these reminders out there and publicize these reminders out there too and i think it's good if you're if we are gonna if as a board we are gonna try to have, hold this sort of pre-town meeting town meeting that should be part of the notification and the notification for the actual town meeting should say that mr schultz I just had a question. Why are we having a pre-meeting town meeting? We've already paired the, the Warren articles back. There's going to be no one that shows up at this, especially if it's indoors. Why are we having it? Why don't we just deal with it on town meeting? That like we normally do? There's not going to be any controversy over any of these articles. They're all routine. We're just creating an extra meeting, really, that no one's going to show up at. Well, what I've, what I've asked the board to do is sort of think a little bit differently this year in terms of passing the budget. So. It may be true that we don't get a lot of people to show up at the town meeting because of COVID-19 and concerns. People have legitimate concerns of becoming infected. But it, it may also be true that people do have questions about the budget items and we do field questions about the budget items. So if there are questions to be fielded, it is kind of important to have an opportunity for everybody all of our town citizens to ask us in advance hear a presentation on the school department's things can that have to be done at our next meeting though why can't that be done at our next meeting it's, i don't think we're gonna get any feedback from many people on these one articles why not just have it as an agenda item on the next meeting instead of having a whole nother meeting I think it's important for us to designate a specific meeting after people receive the warrant articles. So I think once this goes to printer and gets mailed out, then we have a time frame that we know. And I am actually was actually going to pinpoint the Monday prior to town meeting to see if the members are available um, to hold that and to invite other uh, officials to that meeting that may or may not have want to say something about that and invite you know, town voters to that meeting to ask about these. It's just to facilitate the debate process in advance if there is going to be a debate. If there aren't any debate, that's that's wonderful. But shouldn't but the if, debate be a town meeting? That's when you vote. I, mean, I don't understand why we're having a pre-debate. If people are, are we debating it for people who aren't going to show up at town meeting? It, it doesn't make any sense to me why we're taking the night away from our families to do this. Again, I'm really asking the board to think a lot differently this year because there could be a considerable amount of people that don't want to and won't go to town meeting that typically would show up at the town meeting. So it is important for us not to disenfranchise people and to give everybody the opportunity in advance to weigh in in a, virtual, in a yeah, virtual this meeting. This is why it should be outside because you're not gonna have people come inside to a meeting if they're afraid to come in. They'll sit outside in, in an open You have to move to, we do have to move on. And I do want to put it to a, uh, I see Mr. Walner has his hand up. I do want to put it to a vote of the board. It's just a recommendation, a suggestion that I've made. Certainly the members do not have to, to do this, but I think it's this year, I understand it's an extra meeting and we've all been doing all these extra meetings and spending a lot of extra time, but this is a very unusual time. Hopefully we'll never be in a scenario like this again, but we do have to think about someone's mentioned seniors. Someone's mentioned individuals who may just be, they're not seniors and they might just be afraid to go and they typically would show up. And I do think we do want to publicize and discuss and, and get as much of the information out there ahead of time. The second purpose being so that we can streamline the voting process at the actual town meeting. Madam Chair, the, the Chair of the School Committee is seeking recognition. And, well, Mr. Walner had his hand up too, and, can, and then we'll get to you. Thank you, Mr. Buckle. Let's, Mr. Walner, you had your, ha your hand yeah. up. And Darren did too, so I saw all three of us. Oh, I I'll just jump in. I, I, I think it's fine to do an extra meeting. I would just ask that we actually transcribe the questions and the answers, so that way when it comes to town meeting, the actual town meeting, people can review what has already been asked and what has been answered about certain topics. So we don't get the same questions again, or at least they have a little background. Um, so literally just transcribe what they say, not even try to just take meeting notes, but actually transcribe what they say about certain issues. And then everybody has a handout of what happened. That way they have something referred to and it wasn't a total 
it wasn't a waste of, because we might end up with the same questions all over again. And it'd be good to kind of cut to the chase if we could. Mr. Buckley. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The only, the only thing I was going to say is if you were suggesting the Monday after your next select board meeting, I believe that would be June 22nd. We have a school committee meeting that evening. So we're not on the same pace, uh, the same schedule with you. So we'd be meeting on June 22nd. And if you'd like, you know, Mr. Connolly or somebody to present about the LED and the solar panel, the, the solar uh, array, that won't be possible on June 22nd, depending on the timing. Okay. All right. Any other comments, input? Darren has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Attorney Klein. Um, through the chair, and, and I think the chair actually said some of the things I was going to say, but we are seeing a lot of clients do this uh, plan, are planning on having this pre town meeting, and really two main purposes. One is um, you can't do right now an open town meeting remotely where you can do this pre town meeting, which is a select boards meet, meeting. So it'll give people a chance to weigh in, and really the hope is that you get most of your debate out of the way during that pre town meeting which will allow the regular town meeting to also be safer because it'll be sh of shorter duration. Miss, Mr. Gilberto? I'm sorry, I missed a question, Madam Chair. No, it, it wasn't a question. <laughs> if you have everything signed and ready to go Wednesday with yes. some informationals and it takes a week or so to get to the printer and then get mailed out let's see earliest that individuals would receive the warrant we should plan that individuals will receive the warrant two weeks prior to the meeting which would be june 15th okay they, most people will get it on the saturday the 13th but others will get it on monday the 15th that's what the uh, history has, has shown us Okay, and we are scheduled for a select board meeting on the 15th. So that Correct. would at least, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, it would be um, available. We could put a time slot during that meeting. And we, we may, Madam Chair, through you, customarily we've had, um, had a warrant article hearing on the last select board meeting prior to the day of town meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's the opportunity for the public to come in and learn about warrant articles. And occasionally we get guests, but oftentimes we, we don't have much interest. And this is a tradition I think the board started going back, you know, probably decades at this point to try to you know, get more information out there ahead of the evening of town meeting. And I think from our conversation, the thinking was depending upon the, the shape and form that the meeting was gonna take, town meeting that is, and the warrant itself would take, we may wish to dedicate more time, you know, therefore having, you know, this meeting on the 22nd, you know, separate from the standard agenda was discussed. But the board's desire is, you know, not to add a meeting. And we certainly have paired back, you know, the content and, um, you know, we can, there's a number of avenues now, including our more recent Facebook presence, where we can get information out there about this, for what I understand to be a virtual meeting, to be clear, in advance of the town meeting. So I, I think, you know, that that, it could work on the 15th, that's the desire. Just expanding that time frame to be able to have more interaction and inviting, like Mr. Walner said, if people want to put a question in advance, where do they send that to and things like that. So I think yeah, that yeah. would be a good informational to put on the, to put in with the warrant when it gets sent out. In addition to the, you know, kind of reminded get there ahead of time and, you know, that type yeah. of thing. Um, so it's what's the board's pleasure here? Do you want to just just do everything on the fifteenth, or it's, um, identify a separate date for? I, I would just ask, Mr. Buckley, what is your time that you do your school committee meeting on the twenty second? Uh, typically, it begins at 6.30. If there's an ex executive session, it would probably begin at 6. And how late do you usually go? Well, it depends. A little bit quicker than you guys, it seems. But we, uh, it, I don't think there's a lot on the agenda that evening. 
but I, I'm not sure if, if uh, Dr. Daly's still on, I think he might know a little bit more about what's on the agenda that evening. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Daly. Yes, I, I do. That will be a fairly longer agenda than tonight, uh, Mr. Buckley and Madam Chair. So I would say at least 930 um, to be safe, maybe maybe nine or 930. We do have all the, the presentations of the, the school improvement plans from all the schools that night. So it might, may take a little bit of time. Okay. okay. Any other thoughts Madam from Chair, my colleagues? I would be inclined to just put it as a separate, uh, make it a public hearing on the 15th. We know. We've yeah. heard you say that about 16 times now. So we get it. Mr. And Schultz why would you, wants us to keep it on the 15th. Well, I mean, it just nobody's going to show up at this. It, historically, no one appears at these. We have these things every part of town meeting. We don't get any feedback, especially when we paired the, the warrant article back. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some more dialogue yeah. with the virtual meeting, you know. So, um, are we, so is that Mr. O'Leary, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. Warner, we know what Ms. Women's <laughs> stands. So. Yeah, again, I, I think, I think your, uh, your concept and your ideas is, is, is worth considering and worth doing because, you know, in the interest of transparency, participation, uh, and, and again, we haven't yet done it, but we're going to be going over the, um, the budget and we're going to be talking about positions that are not going to be filled and uh, initiatives that are not going to be undertaken that uh, people may want to comment on and get further explanation from us as to the rationale as to why other than just no money. And, you know, why is one thing prioritized over another? And again, I, I don't disagree. There's very, the level of participation and interest is generally low. And I think, you know, where this year people are concerned about even the few people that do come out are concerned about showing their faces and coming out into public, you know, this may provide them an opportunity um, to ask their questions. So and again, and if nobody participates, you know, that it's a quick, short meeting for us. Um, so again, I, I have no problem, you know, driving out another evening uh, to try something new. Uh, and it may be something that we're gonna be dealing with in the future uh, to, to work out the kinks, but you know, if the majority wants to do it on the 15th, that's fine too, too okay. either way. But uh, I, think, I think it's a good suggestion and worthy of consideration. If we do keep it to the 50, we would just have to, you know, make it a public, you know, portion longer than what we typically do. Mrs. Gonzalez, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, I was just going to suggest if we did do it on the 15th, um, that maybe we could start earlier if that worked for everybody. We could maybe do it five o'clock so that the school committee, somebody from the school committee, Mr. Keneally could make that presentation early before their meeting starts? Their meeting's on another week, so. That oh, I thought it was that night. Right, no, the, the night that we were initially talking about, that's their longer meeting. The, the week oh, so on the 15th, you're good. So the one on the 15th is good, because okay. it, we, okay. we do anticipate at least people would get the warrant that day. Okay. That works for so, me. It's a little tough, but. It, it, it would be enough notice for people to see in it, you know, something included in there saying, by the way, we're meeting, you know, the 15th, call in, send an email in on any warrant article questions that you have. And then we would just have to anticipate that being a little bit longer, maybe a little bit longer meeting than what we're typically used to, which we're used to long meetings. <laughs> Mr. Buckley. Did you wait? We you waiting there? Yes. Well, all I was going to say is if you if you did prefer to do it on the twenty second, we could we could adjust our meeting a little bit later if you needed to or earlier. But uh, again, I mean, it's whatever you guys whatever you guys decide. We can we can help, but we do have to have that meeting there. And I forgot that it's school improvement plans, so it will be a long meeting. So we'd like to start it around six six thirty if we could, but we could start it later if it's helpful. I think if I think we're trying to decide this now so that Mr. Gilberto can put something together by way of an informational to be included with the warrant. So I think if the consensus is we'll just invite that participation on our regularly scheduled select board meeting on the 15th, we'll just have to hope and pray we don't have a lot of other stuff going on because I do think we'll get a little bit more participation than normal. That might be hopeful, wishful thinking, but 
you know, at least we'll give people the opportunity ahead of time. All right, so are we all okay for the 15th or did you wanna pick another day? I just need to know, you were good, okay. General consensus is 15th is when we're gonna do this additional kind of back and forth for anybody that wants to ask questions on the warrant articles. Okay, Mr. Right. Gilberto, do you need any other information? I don't think so, no. Okay, all right. So we, so that's good then too, and we can move on to the next order of business. I'm looking at our uh, 815 fiscal year 2021 budget review. <laughs> budget review and then the informational hearing that we were supposed to have about an hour and a half ago. So, yes. Mr. Calaverno. So, uh, I think we're at the budget review first, which sort of relates to the budget hearing. Um, there's been quite a bit of work going on since the last meeting to try to come to a balanced budget and um, you know it, it would appear that after a financial planning team meeting on Thursday and then again late this afternoon that we have a a balanced budget this evening um, to present to the select board although it's not in the neat and buttoned up version that it normally is in purely because some of the decisions were made um, as recently as this evening's school committee meeting um, so the uh, finance director uh, and I have been in some conversations about in any available areas to identify um, funding to try to get us closer towards a balanced budget. And that's after a financial planning team meeting in which we saw a, um, a deficit of uh, about $200,000 between the school and municipal budgets. And that was as recently as last Thursday. So for the edification of select board members and, and of the public, I'm going to ask the finance um, director to share the uh, listing of reductions, which is, or actually, I, Liz, I can actually share it from my computer, I think, if that makes it easier, and I, I'll just go through it, and then I'll, can I, I'll just ask you to speak to the revenue plan. Does that work? Sure, whatever works. I have it up if you want me to just share it. Yeah, just share it out then. That's fine if you've got sure. it right there. Yep. So what, what you're going to see from the finance director is a, a listing of Reductions, um, the first group of which were already, you know, were previously reviewed with the select board at the meeting on May 18th. Um, so um, that's the first group there. And then below it is a second group, which we've uh, assembled, um, you know, not easily by any stretch, but have assembled to recommend to you for areas for us to um, reduce the budgets to make, um, to, to get to a balanced budget. So Liz, would you be able to review that? Sure. So as the town administrator mentioned, um, the top list of uh, budget cuts were discussed um, after May 18th or around May 18th. Uh, and then this is the uh, new listing of additional uh, budget cuts that the town administrator um, and myself have gone through as well as reviewed with the financial planning team um, last Thursday. So that there was total additional reductions of 128,000. The municipal budget gap as of 527 was 151. We needed to add back $2,200 for a uh, change in the Conservation Commission professional services contract. Um, and as of today, we were adding back 50,000 of small capital items that had been um, cut from the budget and fund that with free cash. We also um, have 102, 104 Lowell Road um, revolving fund offset, which offsets the code enforcement budget. So that left the municipal budget gap at 180. The school department's budget, budget gap was um, 68 and change, 68,000 and change. And so we were able to find surplus within the FY20 health insurance budget to transfer into the 
OPEB trust funds um, in FY20 and then transfer those funds out to offset the retiree health insurance budget. So we are planning on transferring um, 150,000 from the health insurance budget um, into the uh, OPEB trust fund and transferring that back out to offset um, health insurance. And we are funding the small capital with, um, with free cash. Is that accurate, Michael? Yes, um, although through you, Madam Chair, the spreadsheet that you're showing with the addition of the small capital increases the, the, the budget gap and then it's decreased here. The, the summary I have, I had, I had a municipal budget gap of $130,000, but you've, it looks like it's, you've increased it in this spreadsheet here. No, you're, you're correct. It should be decreased. So it's just, I had a column hidden that said funded with free cash. As you can see, it goes from B to I. So um, that is correct. It was 13319 And then um, the school departments was 68000 in, in um so that is that is accurate. So we, we had a municipal budget gap on May 27th at 151,000. We were had an increase in the Conservation Commission professional services that was contractual that we didn't have in the budget request. The gap was 153,000. We have an offset in the Lowell Road um, account of 23,000. We get to 130,000. And I see you've made that change on your screen, so thank you. And so the, the step, so, so that got a, we got a, basically, as you can see through here, you know, and Liz, did you, did you have anything you wanted to add or shall I go through the, the lines, the 28 through 38, the reductions themselves? No, that's all I had to add for this. Okay, so just to go through the reductions again, you know, having gone through the first group, you know, the, you know, most of those reductions were either above line 25 there, they were either new programs um, or positions that were funded even for this current fiscal year, but were being recommended to be held vacant. So we had to go further into you know the budget, and we've got in consultation with the veterans director, we're able to reduce veterans benefits by thirty thousand dollars, while still leaving a healthy amount in there that we believe will cover our liabilities and potential additional caseload if they come up during the course of the fiscal year. The EDC professional services, so they, they've had a rolling amount of twenty thousand dollars each year, and they do have some funding that's uh, left available out of this current fiscal year um, that um, I believe, Liz, they may be able to carry over into the next fiscal year if they have a specific purpose for it by June 30th. Correct. Is that, is that correct? Yes. The CPC small capital, that was a $5,000 request for um, subdivision regulations that we've talked with the town planner and we can defer. Um, we had some tuition reimbursement and training and education requests that uh, will largely be deferred, although we have two requests for participation in the Mass Municipal Association um, Certificate in Local Government Management, which we are hoping that we'll be able to pre-fund out of funding in fiscal year 2020. Um, so we're optimistic we'll be able to cover those even though we have to make the reduction. The DPW vacant position, um, you we're all familiar with the challenges that we've been facing with snow and ice and uh, the contractors. So we really want to get that position filled, but this would contemplate filling it um, on or about November 1st. So it'd be available for us for the snow and ice season. Reducing the select board budget, we were looking to go to a per uh, meeting compensation program, but would be deferring that. And I want to recognize Jane for her willingness to continue to help us uh, with the meetings um, and taking the minutes. Town administrators training and education was intending to participate in the ICMA conference in Toronto. Of course, it's not being held in Toronto this year and I'm um, not, not intending to pursue it um, as a virtual conference either. And so we're reducing that funding. Um, we believe we have flexibility in the fuel budget and the amount of $15,000, which we're recommending for a reduction. And um, the uh, finance director, could, Liz, could you speak to number 37 there? Yes. Um, this. These were funds that are set aside uh, for an actuarial study for OPEB. And you don't have to have a full study done every year. And so um, next year would have been our year that we have to have a full study, but we will um, uh, sign a contract prior to next year and, and take care of it with uh, FY20 funds. 
So, you know, there's been a lot of work that's gone into this. And honestly, there's a, you know, there's a bit of sacrifice as to the programming that we're going to be, you know, advancing both um, positions that were previously filled and will be held vacant and certainly the new positions and new programs um, that we'll need to address. You know, I also need to note that some of these reductions will have an impact on our free cash available at the end of the fiscal year, namely the reduction in veterans benefits, as well as the reduction in fuel. Um, but there are steps that are necessary if we're going to avoid, you know, more dramatic, um, dramatic impact on the, uh, the operating budget. Um, so that gives you an idea of some of the things that we're recommending for budget reductions. You know, subsequent to that, the finance director has identified a strategy which would allow us to effectively close the gap for both the municipal and the school department budgets, um, which I know you, you kind of started to talk about. Could you just sort of outline that again, Liz? Sure. So um, the total municipal budget gap is 130000 and and uh, the schools was 68000 and change. And so the plan that was discussed at financial planning earlier this evening was to um, transfer surplus from the FY20 health insurance budget into the OPEB trust funds and transfer that, those funds back out to offset the retiree health insurance because that's an allowable expense to be paid for out of the OPEB trust. And then the other item would be to pay for 50,000 of small capital that is within the DPW's budget with from free cash. And so in the course of our financial planning discussion, while we had a you know, proportionally a larger share of the deficit you know, going into the meeting this afternoon and in consultation with the superintendent of schools, the assistant superintendent for finance and operations and two representatives of the school committee, one of them being Mr. Buckley, who I believe is on this call, there was an agreement to take that funding that Liz has been able to identify, um, which is a further stretch, but not one that we have not had to pursue in the past. Um, probably the uh, sort of last resort, if you will, without going into things that sort of destabilize us financially. Um, you know, we've recommended this and the school committee representatives, you know, agreed to uh, applying that amount sort of to the deficit as a whole, which would allow both budgets to come into balance rather than running that money through the revenue plan where there would be a share that would go to the school, which would be about two thirds and a share that would come to the municipal budget. And um, I'm told by Mr. Buckley that earlier this evening, the school committee approved a budget that reflected that, um, which uh, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to them for. And that puts us in a position with this board's action this evening to, to have a, a difficult and a, a significantly reduced but balanced budget based on everything that we know right now going into the June town meeting. Um, and it's not for a lot of work, including weekly meetings of the financial planning team. Uh, a number of the folks are, who, who, who have participated are in which are on this call here this evening. With that, we'd be happy to answer any questions and um, offer any further information that we can. Um, we have actually prepared a motion um, that it, I'm going to say it's a conditional motion. And you know, much like the town meeting discussion, this is all happening very fast. But um, we believe that the motion that, that I've emailed to the clerk would, if the board were agreeable, allow us to have the board approve a balanced budget with one huge, not, with one significant caveat that our debt service number is still not an exact number, but we believe we are within striking distance of, uh, of everything being balanced. So what that would mean is if you were to approve this motion, it would allow us to actually put the budget in the warrant, balanced, put it in people's hands two weeks before the meeting, which even four days ago, I didn't think would be possible and um, give them the information in writing ahead of time. It may mean that we need to revote something down the road if that debt service number changes, but I, I, don't, I don't, and the finance director could certainly speak for herself, but I don't believe it's gonna be significant. I agree. Um, I don't think the amount will be significant. Um, and it really what it has to do with is we're waiting on an answer on some uh, pay downs that we have to make for bands that we've had outstanding for longer than two years. So, um, and the one piece of it is exempt debt. So it wouldn't have an impact um, that, you know, that's a, a net zero impact. So I don't, I don't anticipate it being um, a large issue, but I just want everybody to know that, that you might be revoting it just because, because of that. That's all. We will still be within 
good shape of a balanced budget. So I'm, I'm not, it's just that the numbers may be um, a little different. Okay, thank you. Let's hear from the members. Do the members have any questions? Mr. Walner. Yeah, um, uh, just the, the one that kind of pains me, and I'm sure you guys thought about it is, you know, the grant writer has the potential to bring in tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to the town. Um, so in a way we get a return, I believe, on what they can offer the town. And I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to go the wrong way with the budget, but it seems like a pretty valuable position because I know that's been a need for a long time. So can you just comment on that particular one? And I, of course I want a balanced budget as well, but that one's just a little painful for me. Yeah, I understand. I mean, it was a priority of this board going back 18 months now, almost two years. And it's not something that I, I, I suggest lightly. Um, I will tell you that, you know, we've, we've done a, I, I think our department heads have done a, a, a very good to great job of identifying funds where, where possible. Um, you know, we, we've been, you know, even during this pandemic, we benefited from grant funds from, you know, from a board of health standpoint. Um, we have ongoing grants and public safety that we've worked on and we've been able to try to continue to advocate for one of which I'm going to mention in my TA report. So I, I think that we feel that we have, you know, a program that will allow us to continue to pursue grants. It may not be as robust as I think all of us want it to be, but I don't want to give any impression that we're going to start foregoing grant funding. I mean, this, a lot of this is lying in department at the departmental level and we have people who are seasoned at these, you know, in these programs who, are advancing them. So I think that's why we felt that, you know, it, it, rather than having to go, you know, for that amount of money to some other program or existing position that, you know, we would, we would continue to limp along and, you know, kind of keep our eye on the ball that we really want to try to see that position added to the budget, you know, as soon as possible. Um, but that we just, that, that now is not that moment. So it's not a recommendation we make lightly, but, you know, we make it knowing, I mean, even Liz today, we were on a call, you know, talking about, Grant funding, she's you know picking up some things on her end. She has people in her office that are capable of assisting as well. So, you know, we're cobbling it together. We are, but um, but we are still advancing these grant programs. Uh, well, then I appreciate the explanation and also the extra effort people are trying to do to fill in the gaps while we went through. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the members? And this is an informational hearing, so do we have any questions of any? Madam, Madam Chair, through you, my suggestion would be, so I was actually on, operating under the budget, fiscal year 21 budget item rather than uh, the hearing itself. But my suggestion would be oh, yes. perhaps to consider continuing that hearing to the evening of the 15th, and we'll have a, full, a more detailed presentation to go through and the public can see it, rather than, you know, tonight where we're sort of, we're not operating off the seat of our pants, but it's something like that <laughs> here. And so we could give a better presentation, give the public the opportunity to comment in in the, in the context of the town meeting preparation. Um, because I, 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 I don't want to be presumptuous, but I, I hope the board will consider taking a vote because that vote will allow us to put this Warren article, you know, in there. The board could open the hearing and we could revisit it under the Warren article hearing again, if you'd like as well. Um, I'll leave it to, to, to you. Um, but we, we normally have a nice buttoned up presentation that just because of the way the timing played out, we don't have that this evening. Okay. In, in that we just work these issues out in the school, just work these issues Correct. out about five hours ago, but <laughs> really appreciating everybody's ability to mobilize and think mm. and work on these and come up with an effective strategy. And these, all of these are not easy eliminations or or I don't want to say cuts, but all of these are difficult because it, the school department had went through the same exercise and our department heads went through the exercise of what could they go back and do without. And this is the time right now. Unfortunately, we know that this is going to be a significant hit to us financially with the revenues that, that are going to be depleted because of COVID-19 and the probably the more significant brunt of it that our finance director has explained to us on multiple occasions is not even going to be next year, but the next coming couple of years. So we, we're not into it. We're not even into it now, knowing what we know now we've had to, to 
you know, take some significant review of this. So everybody that participated in that and the school department's willingness to work on that too is really appreciated. Absolutely. It cannot be underscored that that extra effort on something that was so unanticipated. Um, all right, Mr. Well, Mr. O'Leary, any comment, question? No, just that the, you know, the process works here. The financial planning team process does work and it uh, is the fruits of our labor, I guess. Uh, pay, as painful as it is and has been, but it's, um, it, it's really very, very worthwhile. And we get it going to town meeting United and with a balanced budget, that's quite an accomplishment with all that we're facing. And again, to the school department and the finance committee, again, thank you for your efforts and cooperation with everything here. So it's gone very well. Thank you. Really, superintendent getting a baptism by fire this year. <laughs> yeah. Not just this, but everything else he's had to deal with. All right, Mr. Schultz. No, I would say the same thing. It's, you know, a lot of hard decisions have been made this year. And, you know, the two boards did it, and we're going to go to town meeting with a budget that's going to be balanced. So I didn't know, I didn't know that was possible three weeks ago. So right. I'm that is. So that's great. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, great job. Great job by everybody. Thank okay. you all for all your work. So, what what, we'd, what I'd, I'd ask the board to do is let's take a motion on approval so that the, you know, we can get moving forward and we'll, we'll, I guess we could open the informational hearing or just agree to postpone it until the next uh, meeting so we can have a, a more detailed presentation. For, from our finance director and our TA on that. Well, where it's been advertised, we should probably open it and continue it. Okay. All right. So let's do I have a motion on the budget? Madam Chair. Madam, Madam Chair. Do I Sorry. have a motion on the budget? So the, the clerk does, although I believe the finance director is just uh, correcting that $50,000 oh. discrepancy that came up. Liz, is that correct? Yes. I'm sending it right now to Liam. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to jump right on you there. Oh, oh that, I see Mr. Great. Buckley has Mr. Oh, Buckley Mr. has his hand up. Mr. Buckley. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll stall for uh, Ms. Rourke when she completes that. But um, I, I'll just jump in as a member of the finance planning team as well. In the last couple of years, it was um, it, it was a very challenging year because and very different than last year when I was there. I mean, last year we sort of had an idea what the revenue was, at least what was coming in for state aid. We still don't know, but you know, we, you know, meeting after meeting, it was more and more um, frustrating because we kept making more conservative estimates. But, you know, I just applaud, you know, in particular, you know, the town administrator and finance director. I think they were great in leading the discussion on the revenue. Um, appreciate the finance, uh, the finance committee, you know, Mrs. Hurlbut and uh, uh, Mr. Kelleher as well. And of course, you know, Madam Chair and uh, the Vice Chair, Mr. O'Leary, for the participation. And, I think overall, we all agreed the whole time that the goal was to try to prioritize services and jobs. And, you know, again, we're losing positions. The school side is losing positions next year over this year. I think, you know, the town is losing positions next year over, over this year. It's no, by no means do I think this is a great budget uh, on either side, but I thought it was, you know, great to see it work. As, as Mr. O'Leary said, you know, the, the process did work. And so it was, it was, you know, an honor to work with you guys on it. And it was a very challenging year. And you look around in other towns and what they have is nothing like what we have. You know, they're, they're all fighting about it. They're laying lots of people off. I mean, I think that, you know, nobody really wants to use one-time funds for any of this, but, you know, we had to prioritize jobs over everything else and services. And so I appreciate it working with everybody and appreciate um, the professionalism that went into the finance planning team this year. Thank you. Dr. Daly. I could just add again, thank you to everyone for working on this. It was exactly how I pictured my first few months as superintendent, as you, as you said. <laughs> but, but trying to, you know, to navigate these waters and, and also in difficult times, but also in a virtual environment. You know, I think some of the relationships, luckily I've been around for a while and I do know everyone. I certainly know folks in a different capacity now as, as superintendent, but I, I, you know, I applaud the efforts of our, of our group um, for really being able to, to work together and to come to, to a great solution that's best for our, for our students and families and, and everyone in the community. So thank you everyone for that. 
And uh, as Mr. Buckley said, it's not the budget that we that we planned on. It's not anything that, that we can really uh, – we, we certainly have a lot of room for improvement. But in these trying times, I think we're very happy with being able to have a balanced budget. Um, and, and that's a credit to the great folks that are that are involved in this. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Maureen. <laughs> yes. Hi, this is Maureen from the Transcript How are you this evening. Okay. I couldn't see who that was. Good, good evening. Um, could, could you just state what the final budget is, the final budget figure for the um, fiscal year 21? How many, yes. how many million is it? How many what? The, the total budget for the town with all, with all of these reductions. What, what does this sure. bring the total budget to? There's going to be a motion that we're just trying to make sure we get, get correct. That's going to, be, going to be read. That will give you these exact numbers and I can also email it to you afterwards. Great. Thank you. Mr. Alberto, you may want to just comment too, as far as our, what we're trying to do here is also balance um, grant monies, which we hope are going to be available to reimburse us for the COVID-19 cost, sure. which is certainly going to help plug the gap a little bit. So we, we do have up to $1.3 million in COVID-19 funding that's available through the CARES Act for um, for funding um, for fiscal year, the end of fiscal year 2020 and fiscal year 2021 through December 31st, 30, December 30th. So basically what, what we've done is we're allowed to set up a, a grant account, I believe that's the term, and Liz can correct me, that, that we can expend out of and then get reimbursed from, which allows us to take those expenses and keep them out of the operating budget. So additional technology, additional cleaning, Things like that, the federal government has made money available that's being distributed through the state that we'll be relying on to address those costs. And therefore, we, we've not put those costs into this budget because of the third party funding source. And I believe that that's also the case for, or, or largely the case for North Reading Public Schools, although the superintendent can correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to know if the superintendent's going to get reimbursed for his mileage for dropping off all the Chromebooks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert, could you just repeat the, the statement? So just that largely we have not increased expenses related to COVID in the fiscal year 21 budgets for the municipal school budgets because of the, um, the funding that we've been told is forthcoming from the federal government to the tune of up to $1.3 million for the town. Correct. The, we've, the, we've been, as you have, we've been collecting some of the, the expenses to date and also trying to plan ahead a mm -hmm. little bit through December, but yes, it's not built in at this time. Okay, we also okay, so, have a motion, um, Mrs. So, Gonzalez. Do, do we have the correct motion out there, Liz? I believe I have it. All right, so Madam Chair, I move to recommend the FY 2021 operating budget in the following amounts as proposed by the town administrator. Fixed costs, 22, 173, 784, 08. School, 32, 526, 778. Municipal, 17, 039, 843 for a total of 71, 740, 362, 51. Okay. To the finance director, is that those are correct numbers as you understand it? That is correct. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. And any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. The chair votes aye.
to unanimous. Thank you. Okay, our next order of business is to open the informational hearing. So we're gonna open the hearing, but as we're, we've explained, we're gonna move to postpone it after we open it so that we can have a more detailed presentation at our next meeting on the 15th, um, which is also when we're gonna engage in a, a, a remarkable amount of debating back and forth with town voters. <laughs> so, although we did not <laughs> hold the public hearing this evening or informational public hearing, we'll open it. So if you could read the um, motion to open Mrs. Gonzalez and then we'll, yep. we'll continue it. There may not be a motion to open there, the hearing. There isn't, but I could fake it. There's a notice. I'm sorry. Oh, is a notice in there? Informational oh, notice is in there. Oh, where? I thought there was. Didn't I? Uh, see yes. That? that one I saw, yeah. right? That page was it? 30, 32. 32. Okay. So let me just read the notice. The Town of North Reading Notice of FY 2021 Budget Informational Hearing. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the Town of North Reading that an informational hearing on the fiscal year 2021 budget anticipated to be considered at the June annual town meeting will be held virtually Monday, June 1st, 2020, 8.15 p.m. Interested residents will be given the opportunity to be heard and may participate as follows via the internet on the Zoom connection or via the phone. So we can uh, open the informational hearing. Do I have a motion to postpone that? Yes. No hearing until June 15th. Well, continue. Excuse me, continue it. Yes, thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Do I hear a motion? Madam Chair, I move to continue the fiscal year 2021 budget hearing to Monday, June 15th at 8.15 p.m. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second for discussion purposes. Okay, motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary for discussion purposes. Please. Do we want to leave it at, at 8.15 or do we want to put it right up front at the beginning of the agenda and dispense with it? Madam, Madam Chair, through you, we were contemplating this time prior to the determination that we would do the larger Warren article hearing on the same night. So, I, you know, I think either doing it before or doing it after the Warren article hearing might make sense. And given the robust debate, I'm not sure how, how late we would want to make, have to make it. <laughs> Let's do the informational hearing first. And we, we, also want, we also want to make sure that the school committee members that are going to be participating, you know, don't nod off because, you know, we go a lot longer than they do. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that joined us at 8.15 is now long gone and probably sleeping. So I'm sleeping right now as we're talking. I'm only kidding, folks. All right, so let's do it earlier then, right? Yeah. It would make sense to have the the budget informational presentations first, and then we can discuss the warrant articles, right? Yes, I okay. believe so, so yes. Timing-wise, what does that look like, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, I think I'd say 7.45. Okay, so... I'll revise that. Uh, to continue the fiscal year 2021 budget hearing to Monday, June 15th at 7.45. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Thank you. That's unanimous. Next order of business is the you get back to the agenda there. We have to review and discuss the June town meeting warrant articles and vote recommendations. Madam Chair, so we have art we have warrant article recommendations that are based on a warrant that's no longer I valid. Know. So okay. if you can indulge me, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do the kind of fast and furious version of this. So Article 1, which will be the fiscal year 2020 budget amendment, my recommendation would be to 
vote to recommend at town meeting if the board wishes to make a, a mo just such a motion. Let's take these one at a time, okay? So that yep. is you're giving us new article numbers and Correct. so we wanna make sure that we're... So Previous I, article three, budget do I amendment hear a, not article my, one. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. I didn't it's mean to interrupt you. That's what, no, I, I think I interrupted you, I'm sorry. It's uh, previously was article three and now will be article one, the fiscal year 2020 budget amendment. My, my suggestion is will be recommended at town meeting. Right, because we don't know those yet and we typically do review those finally before mm -hmm. town, town, Correct. At town meeting. Do I have a motion to make a recommendation on artic now article one at town meeting? Do I have these numbered right? Mr. You do not. No, you do not. <laughs> That's why we're going to go through them one at a time. Okay. So what? Which one? Um, what was it originally? It was originally Article Three, and now it's Article One. So if we want to take the article with the new article number and the title in our motion, that's what we'll vote on. So, so Article One, FY 2020 Budget Amendment. Correct. Madam Chair, I move to. Recommend at town meeting, Article One, FY 2020 Budget Amendment. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Who was that, Mr. Walner? Yep. Okay. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Walner. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay. Next article. Article two is now going to be. It was previously Article four. Oh. Funding the fiscal year 2020 snow and ice budget deficit. Um, Liz, do you have that that number as anticipated at this point? I can give it to you as it is today, but um, there are still invoices that are coming in, so I, I would say to vote that at a town meeting. Okay. But we're still going to recommend it, so we could just right. recommend it. Yeah, right. Whatever the number is, we're going to recommend it. So we should publish as many recommendations as we can. Yes. I, I, my own personal feeling. Yes. Well, the number is going to change, so just don't vote the number. I guess. Just don't vote the number. Right. So we're going to vote to recommend, and we'll, if we have to re-recommend, we will. Well, Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting article question mark. Fund FY 2020 snow and ice def deficit. Is the intention to recommend it at town meeting or to recommend it now? Well, or I can, a, a vote, vote to recommend it now was the intention. The motion came differently. So do I have a second to that motion? Second. Okay. No. <laughs> Madam Chair, but can I just ask the clerk to restate the, the motion, which would be sure. to recommend Article 4 or Article 2? I thought we weren't doing a number. We're, we're not doing a number. We're, we're going to recommend, gonna recommend the payment of the snow and ice bills that come right. in. So, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article uh, two, two. Fund FY 2020 snow and ice deficit. It's now Article 2. So, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Manny Pelli is aye. So, Mr. Gilberto, next article. Article five, appropriate funding to the capital improvement stabilization fund. This is money that we transfer into the fund and then transfer out as part of the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. And um, Liz, are you able to provide us that number? One moment, please. At this moment, it looks like it is a million fifty. So, and the, the, the total going against the revenue plan is a higher number than that, though, correct? 
Correct, because it's there's already funds within there that are above and beyond what the capital committee keeps. Great. Okay. Thank you. And the motion would be to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 3, FY 2020, appropriate funds to Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Upelli is aye. Next article. Madam Chair, through you, Article, what will be Article 4, shown as Article 6, and what will be Article 5, so, shown as Article 7. I believe that we should recommend both of those at town meeting because we don't have the water stabilization transfer number yet, I don't think, Liz. If you have it offhand, then we can take, take up action on it, but you may not. And with regard to the stabilization. Sorry, I do have that number uh, for the water infrastructure stabilization. Great. Okay, good. And we can we can recommend that one if you could provide the number. 451-173. And that's going to be Article 5, you said, or 4? Four. It'll be 4, shown as Article 6 in the packet. Right. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 4, FY 2020, transfer funds to water stabilization fund. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manupelli is aye. Articles, uh, Article 5, which is shown as Article 7, would be a transfer into the stabilization fund. And I think I mentioned uh, earlier that we expect that there will be a, any residual of free cash would potentially be recommended to be transferred there. But while we're finalizing some of these other things, I'm going to suggest we hold off on that, on that recommendation until uh, the evening of town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting, Article 5, FY 2020, appropriate money to stabilization fund. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Upelli is aye. We're on to Article 6. Which is uh, shown as Article 8 on the previous warrant. It's a transfer of funding into our other post-employment benefit liability trust fund, which is an important part of our actions to try to balance the budget for fiscal year 21. Um, Liz, would you just be able to give us the dollar amount for that? Yes, it's $150,000 from the FY20 um, employee benefit health insurance budget. And the uh, suggestion would be to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 6, FY 2020, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Okay. I have a motion and a second. by Ms. Motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Article seven. She's shown as article nine. Liz, is, this is the one I'm thinking of. We, we, we won't know until later in June what the number is, right, for that That's one? Correct, Michael. Okay, so this would be a recommendation to pass over. Uh, no. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> We recommendation just, to recommend a town meeting. <laughs> sorry, we all caught that one, so. TBD, <laughs> amount to be determined. <laughs> Thank you, Liz and Kate. 
Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 7, FY 2020, transfer funds to Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. Second. A motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Ms. Manny Pelly is aye. Madam Chair. Right. Yes. If you're, if you're so inclined, I think we could take articles 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 together as actions to recommend. Those articles are all routine articles that we do each year. Um, the first to select town officers, which is something that we're required by statute to do. Um, to hear and, uh, hear and act on the reports of town committees, including the annual report. This article um, shows up as 11, but it'll be nine. And then accepting the easements and entering into compensation balance agreements. Those are for the DPW director and the town treasurer respectively. And that's important pieces of how we conduct business year over year, Article 14. It's simply authorizing the expenditure of the funding. It's not an appropriation. Um, we have received a letter and I think it's $561,000 we're receiving or we're expecting to receive from the state. But in the end, this is just the authority to spend that money um, for road construction. So I offer that as a means to maybe expedite the review. Perfect. Music to our ears. Okay. So do we want to take these all together? It'd be Is articles 8 through 12. Yes. Oh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend articles 8 through 12. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Ms. Manupelli is aye. Article 15, which will show up as Article 13, is prior year bills. And we do have at least, I believe, one bill that's pending out there. There may be others, and we customarily suggest that the board recommend at town meeting uh, on this article. So, um, originally 14? It was originally 13, I believe. Sorry, uh, originally, uh, I have it backwards. It was originally 17. <laughs> so, we have 14, 15, 16. Is that we're not doing those, right? It was originally 15, it's now going to be 13. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> Correct. So we're passing over 14? No, um, so 14 was in the batch of eight through 12. <laughs> 14 is 12. So. Oh, I think I made the motion eight. Oh, no, you did it right. I did? You, you both, yes. yes, you did, congratulations. Wow, all right. I didn't <laughs> write it right, I said it right. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, oh, Mr. Gilberto, why don't you the draft the draft warrant article number and the name of the warrant article? If you could just say the draft warrant article number, which is now numbered X, will be, you know, what you and make your recommendation. Maybe that might assist with Mrs. Gonzalez looking through this. Sure. So, Article Fifteen, Article Fifteen in the packet on the original okay. warrant for prior okay. bills, which will now be Article Thirteen. For prior year bills, we customarily recommend that the board vote to recommend at town meeting because the, those numbers yeah, are likely to change. Okay, so do we have a motion to recommend Article 13 prior year bills at the town meeting? Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 13 prior year bills. Second. Motion and a sec motion by Mrs. Gonzalez, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Yapelli is aye. Next item, Mr. Gilberto. Next um, item on the draft agenda. Was Article 16 for the fiscal year 2021 operating budget? It will now be Article 14 on the warrant. And based on the board's prior vote on the budget, my recommendation would be to vote to recommend Article 14, the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. 
Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 14, FY 2021, Operating Budget. Second. Motion and a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Do I have any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Mrs. Manupelli is aye. Madam Chair, in our review earlier, we um, determined to remove Article 17 rescind authorization to borrow. So that article will not is not on the warrant and therefore does not require a recommendation. The article shown as Article 18 for fiscal year 2021 capital expenditures, which will actually be Article 15, um, 15, 15. under uh, on, the, uh, on the warrant itself for fiscal year 21 capital expenditures. And my recommendation based upon the presentation that we got from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee is that the board vote to recommend Article 15 FY 2021 capital expenditures. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 15 FY 2021 capital expenditures. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez. I'll give this one to Mr. Schultz as a second. That's what I wrote, so that's good. That's right. And, 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 no discussion. I see no further discussion. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. So Article 16 is recommended. I mean, 15. Oh, my word. I put 16 as the next. I'm trying to keep track for all of you, too. Article 16. Madam Chair, so we'll be pat we will not be putting Article 19 in the printed warrant, um, Tom Building Repairs. It was not on the signed warrant. So we'll move to the next article, Article 20, which will be Article 16 on the signed warrant and um, the dollar amount associated with that, um, Liz can provide, I believe. The dollar amount associated with retirements is 200,000 and it's to be funded by free cash. And my recommendation to the board would be to vote to recommend. Article 16, fund retirement obligations. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 16, fund retirement obligations. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelly is aye. 17 is next. Madam Chair, through you, um, this article, Appropriate Funds to Other Post-Employment Benefits Liability Trust Fund, shows up as Article 29, 21 on the printed warrant in the packet. It's actually Article 17. I have that right? 17 now? Yeah, yeah that's right. And um, to, the, to the finance director, could you provide the dollar amount, please? Yes, it's 300000 from Reason Appropriate. Great. My recommendation would be to recommend Article 17, Appropriate Funds to Other Post-Employment Benefit Liability Trust Fund. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 17, Appropriate Funds to Other Post-Employment Benefits Liability Trust Fund. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Upelli is aye. Warrant Article 18. Madam Chair, so we, will, we did not put Article 22 or 23 relative to the PFA or Special Counsel legal expenses on the signed warrant. So we get to Article 24 in the warrant that was in the packet, which will actually be Article 18 appropriating money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. As I meant, I think I mentioned earlier, we would be looking to reappropriate, sorry, I can't keep the meeting straight at this point. Maybe it wasn't this meeting that it I mentioned. Was, in. It, it was, okay, good. Yes. So we believe that there'll be somewhere um, uh, over $90,000 $90, in funding that will be reappropriated from the fiscal year 2020 town council budget into this article. 
plus approximately $50,000 in new funding from free cash that would be appropriated for a rough total of just over $140,000. Um, I can't give you the exact amount because we still have a, a bill that we need to, to net out of that that I have not taken out of it. But because of the importance of this article, I think the board should vote to recommend it, knowing that we may have to revote it to fine tune the actual dollar amounts. So my suggestion would be to vote to recommend Article 18, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 18, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. 19. So we were not going to pursue Article 25 relative to the account for historical buildings, nor Article 26 relative to the um, um, benefit from military service. Um, and yeah, I'll note that that's a ratification of a, a, a fairly long-standing practice. So I don't want anyone to read into the fact that we're no longer going to be doing it, but we're just not going to take the action to ratify the, the, um, the program until a future town meeting. So that brings us to Article 27, which is, is it Article 19, Madam Chair? I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep the numbers straight. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This would be to authorize the lease of land, rooftop space for solar, so, so, solar photovoltaic facilities. So if the board wishes, it could take these articles together, Article 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31, which all relate to the school solar LED project, if the board feels similarly for all of these articles. And again, they would be Articles 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. I the board is comfortable with the presentation. I, I think could, we're, we're comfortable doing that yep. and recommending these. I concur. I was hoping we could do them individually. I'm sure <laughs> you were not. <laughs> I'm outvoted again. <laughs> well, maybe if we just, you know, head to the football field, turn the lights on, then we'll vote on. Okay, let's go. See, we're mush after 10 30. Let's just move this along. I don't think I could climb the bleachers. <laughs> okay, so recommending. Madam Chair, I move to recommend articles 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Second. Perfect. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. Those are our final articles, right, Mr. Gilberto? There's, there's one more article, Article 32, which is funding the FY 2021 revaluation, which would in fact be Article 24. Funding their fiscal year 2021 revaluation. Liz, do you have the dollar amount for that? We, we do not have that dollar amount as of yet, but that will come from overlay reserve. Okay. And this is something we need to do by statute, so our recommendation would be to vote to recommend. Right. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 24, funding for FY 2022 reevaluation. So there was a, an error on that, and it is a 2021. Fiscal. Yes, thank you. So sorry about that. Yeah, we need to vote it for next year's. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a, a second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. So that concludes that portion of things. Yes, Madam Chair. Now our next order of business is to approve the order of taking for the water rechlorination facility at 303 Main Street. Vote to approve and authorize the chair to sign. 
So we're, we're going to recommend passing that over because we're still working on a plan that's satisfactory to the to property owner. We were fully anticipate we'll be able to resolve and and come up with that plan. It's just not complete yet. Okay. So, and just for, you know, to be clear, as I've said before, we had a license. Thank God we had a license because a lot of the disruptive work at the property was done over the past month or so. And um, the pipes there are in the ground. So. Okay. Um, so we're going to pass that over and address that as soon as the details are firmed up. Correct. Next order of business is legal bills. Do I have a Madam Chair, Madam Chair, through you, the news is not great with regard to the legal bills uh, in that we, um, you know, we have nearly depleted the town council budget. Some of it is attributable to work associated with the turkey farm property. Some of it is attributable to uh, work associated with the COVID-19. And uh, some of it is attributed to um, some increases in, uh, in labor costs. So there will be a need for some action, um, either through a, um, a request of the reserve fund or a transfer on the town, a town meeting on June 29th so that we can have sufficient funding on um, some other anticipated legal bills. Um, but these two bills we do have funding in place for and that therefore we've got the motion prepared accordingly. Sorry, Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for April 2020 in the amount as follows, KP Law, SSBC 682.50, American Arbitration Association 325, total $1,007.50. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And you probably is aye. Was that it for legal bills? That's what I have. That's all I have. There should be one, one motion for two bills, correct. Okay. Next order of business is the town administrator's report. Is there anything more that you need to say that hasn't already been said? There is, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first is that uh, the fire chief has submitted a grant application to the federal government for um, federal safer program grant funding, which would allow the town to potentially hire additional firefighters to be paid for by the federal government. The terms of the program, which historically have required a match, were relaxed, making this a, a unique opportunity that we felt was worth pursuing. Um, the fire chief worked diligently over the past couple of weeks to get that application in, but there was a, a, a deadline that, that has come and passed that we needed to comply with. So he has submitted the application on behalf of the town. I want to recognize his work in, uh, in doing so. And we were able to identify some you know, fairly reasonably priced assistance in, in writing that application as well. And uh, I think we're hopeful that, um, that we have a, a good case to be made. Um, it was a tremendous opportunity where there's normally a declining contribution and an increasing you know, match on the part of the beneficiary. And Madam Chair, you may be familiar with it through your work in Malden, but um, you know, this sort of one-time opportunity of not having that match, we really felt we needed to go after it. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts that go along with that type of a change of the program, but I, I do think it could be a fantastic opportunity for the, the town and you know, we're, we're hopeful. So the second- the um, questions on that. I'm, I'm sorry. Do the members have any questions on that, the SAFER grant? Again, what's the time period for it? So it's a three-year grant, as I understand it, and I believe it would be effective this upcoming federal fiscal year, which would begin October 1st. But I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not confident of, the, of the, the, the implementation date. All right. So, uh, will you be forwarding us uh, more information? Or can you forward us a copy of the, yes, I can, a, yes. a copy of the grant, uh, grant proposal? I can yes. I apologize. I just didn't have it at my fingertips at the time it uh, we did this uh, did this re the report, but I can email it. Yes. And so, what happens after that three year period when the funding runs out? Yeah, so we would be responsible for the funding for the positions um, at, at the end of it. That is correct. What what has changed is it's normally that there's a a stepping up of the town's obligation over the course of the grant, which is now you know not the um, not the case under this most recent grant round. And again, you know, this is, you know, we haven't signed a contract for this funding. If we, you know, we, we, we receive an award, but determine that it's not the right fit for us, we would decline to accept it. 
Is there a timeline associated when a decision is going to be made? Are we aware? Um, I'm not aware. I have to assume it's going to be sometime um, over the summer in advance of that October 1st date, but I, even that I'm not, I'm not positive of. Okay. We, we were involved years ago in a similar program with the police department and, mm -hmm. uh, and then ended up having to, again, assume the costs over time. And in addition to that, we had to pay back some additional money because uh, we were getting grant money beyond the time period and then uh, they oh. came back looking for the funds. Oh, wow. So um, that's why I said I'd like to see the. the yep. No, I think that's totally fair. And, you know, to be clear, we haven't signed a grant contract, to, you know, for the funding. And, um, you know, we've made it very clear that, you know, if there's work to be done to figure out the details of implementation, you know, we'll do that before we, we certainly sign off on a, uh, on a grant contract. But yeah, I'll, I'll be able to forward that information to the board. Yeah. And again, I'd like to, yeah, just be made aware as to what the, um, you know, how they would fit into the schedule, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, we will do. I think there's also some fiscal calculations to be made in terms of carrying it forward after the three years. Sure. Especially because we don't really, we don't have a prediction of the financial hit that we're going to, we have a some idea, but don't have a certain picture of the financial hit that we're expected to take. And we've just gone through the exercise of not only Elim, you know, not necessarily eliminating, but not bringing on board multiple personnel from city side as well as um, school department. So I think we need to kind of long-term project what that would mean in terms of carrying forward positions. Sure. Yeah, carrying it forward after the three years. I concur with the chair. I think we need to prioritize, you know, which positions would we like to fill first? And where does this fall in line with that? Sure, so we'll, we'll provide the, the, uh, the grant application and can either have a further discussion on, as an agenda item at a future meeting, if you'd like, or whatever the board you know, wishes. Uh, if you wanna wait to see what the outcome of the grant round is and then further discuss it as well, you know, whatever the board's pleasure is. Okay, all right. Anything else, Mr. Gilberto? Um, I spoke to the uh, grant, the, the micro um, enterprise grant funding that the town planner has worked to to get us to, in a position to compete for. So I will, um, I'll, I won't speak further on that. Um, the uh, DPW director, Patrick Bauer, he has informed me that he will be leaving the town to return to his previous position as director of public works in the city of Methuen. Uh, Mr. Bauer has family and other connections to the city of Methuen and we wish him well. And uh, we're working on a transition plan and a transition date with him, um, which I expect will be at some point um, in the month of June. And I'll just note that Mr. Mr. Bauer was, you know, involved with, um, you know, a significant amount of effort, you know, to to get us through a permitting process that uh, we are are, you know, a lot of the way through, not quite yet 100% complete on. I just want to thank him for his work on that. Finally, the. Uh, the Department of Public Works would like to remind residents that seasonal water use restrictions are in effect. Um, outdoor water use is restricted to odd and even days before seven o'clock a.m. and after seven o'clock p.m., meaning that residents with odd numbered addresses may water their lawns on odd days at that time, and those with even numbered addresses may do so on even number days at that time. I'll also note that utilizing the new water system, water meter system, the attached letter was mailed or emailed to residents around May 27th and to uh, 78 water customers who through the meter system appeared to be watering their lawns outside of the allowable times. Um, so far, 10 customers responded to say that they would change their lawn watering patterns. And I just wanna thank the, um, the water superintendent for his efforts to you know, uh, issue a friendly reminder to folks and, and the response of our residents who are, you know, seem, would appear to be looking to comply. And that concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Gilberto? I don't see any. All right. So, no. So, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. We have old and new business. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just a couple of uh, points. Uh, first of all, on uh, Patrick Bauer. I mean, he's. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with him at length for long hours, you know, on the uh, water and wastewater uh, issues, along with some other matters. And he's been a terrific professional and 
we've been lucky to have him. And again, Methuen's game is uh, is our loss. And uh, but I wish him well. I, and I know he has uh, deep roots there in Methuen, and I hope he's very happy there. But uh, it's a it's a loss to us. He, he he served us well as a great professional. So wish him well. Yeah. The other thing, well, maybe about a month ago uh, in the Globe, I don't know if you uh, recall reading about the uh, discussion as to whether or not town meetings should be continued or not continued, you know, in, in different communities, there was a debate going on in the newspaper. And, uh, but what I found of interest was that in, in several communities, they actually have electronic devices where they record the votes at town meeting. And I just think, you know, uh, if the clerk uh, can free up some time at some point, might want to research uh, some of these communities, uh, see how they're doing it. It just seems to make town meeting run more efficiently uh, when it comes to, uh, counting the votes, you know, so we get in and out of there not in a hurry. And it works pretty well. And again, my guess is it could transition to some other type of virtual uh, opportunities. So uh, the technology is out there, and I, and I think it's just something that we should be looking into uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Walner. Uh, no comments. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Schultz. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Steve stole my thunder. A half hour has been a pleasure to work with. Uh, not only we dealt with him on the water issue, I've dealt with him a lot with the roads program. Where we put a lot of money into getting our roads up to snuff over the last two years, and he'll be sorely missed by our town. Uh, lastly, on a happy note, the class of 2020 will be having a rolling parade around town at 10 a.m. on 20th. The parade route, the details are to be determined, but the data has been put out by the school department, and um, Let's get out and support the seniors. They're really not going to be able to have a graduation per se, as we normally would. Hopefully, we do something later in the summer. But we're going to have a parade for them, and they're going to be riding around town. And let's, you know, let's show them all some love and that we care about them. And you know, as they leave our school system and move on to bigger and better things. So it's Saturday, June twentieth at ten a.m. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, I just wanted to um, thank. Norcam and Sue Magner for the virtual Memorial Day celebration. Um, it was just a, a nice thing that we were able to do. Um, and I just wanted to uh, make a uh, suggestion. I had an, we all, I think we all had an email and then I had a couple others afterwards from Mr. Vino about, he's inquiring about masks being um, given out to seniors and I don't know if anybody um, I think that Mary Prenny might be working on that I just wanted to throw it out there um, if there were any suggestions that we could get those distributed Leanne I, I did speak to Joe about that oh and, you did uh, I did speak to Joe about that I asked for other seniors out there that don't have a mask he wasn't sure of any who didn't and I said if there aren't let us know and we'll we'll whether it's through town hall or through private sources, through the um, In This Together 01864 crowd, we'll make sure seniors have a mask. Okay, great. Mr. Gilberto. I would just add that uh, Ms. Prenny does have access to somewhere around 1,000 masks that she and the Council on Aging are working on a program to distribute um, you know, by door hanger to um, about, about 1,000 addresses of seniors who are over 70. Um, who she's going to put the mask directly in the hands of, uh, along with some volunteers who agreed to distribute them. That's a plan that's still in the works. So, we're, you know, we're not, we don't have an exact distribution date on that yet. And then secondly, we are looking to try to procure a mask for a more wide scale distribution for folks who are over 60 or in the vulnerable categories. Um, and um, there'll be more information forthcoming on that once we've secured the stock and we're in that process right now. Thank you. Oh, all set, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah. Okay. And I really appreciate it once again everybody's efforts in working on all of these financial matters. I know how difficult it is, and I know people have been working around the clock to get these things squared away and all of the information blitz on everything from expansion of liquor license establishments to what's the deficit going to be to you know what's the impact financially going to be and all of these questions and all the all the information coming at us from a million different directions so it's a lot for people to 
to keep on top of. And I really appreciate everyone's efforts in, in managing all that data and getting us to the point that we're at today, luckily and thankfully. Um, so we are going to have some difficult times moving forward in terms of the budget and fiscal picture. But if we can continue to work together the way that we've worked together, then hopefully we can manage it just as well as we we have to this day. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> I can't oh, I even motion it. <laughs> Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Gonzalez. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote. Aye. Thank you, folks. Thank Good you. night, everybody. Good night. Good night.